and uh, they were, were lucky enough in a low scoring affair to uh, to get the job done uh, against Morong a couple of weeks ago in the second semi-final uh, it was 7-12 uh, Morong to 10-7 Pyramid Hill so Morong had more scoring shots but Pyramid Hill were uh, more accurate in front of goal and I unfortunately for Pyramid Hill I think that Morong yesterday's uh, just touched them up nicely like they'd had a week off before they played Pyramid Hill uh, a fortnight ago and two games in a row and now they're cherry ripe and uh, I think Morong they're in a position to go uh, for their three-peat and win three in a row. And that sets up the North Central, their grand final next week as well. So three grand finals going on next week. So plenty of finals for the action to go through. It's Birchip Watcham taking on Sea Lake Nan Daly. That'll be the grand final. But here in the reserves footy, before you talk on that game, Norm, it is full time. Golden Square uh, out of the reserves footy in 2024. 4 5 29 to the Streffield Say Storm. 7 12 54. So it is one up on the Storm. Quick tip on that North Central game before we go to a break, Norm Jenkins. Birchett Watcham, Sea Lake Grand Final next Saturday. Uh, that'll be a top contest. Sea Lake Nandale's uh, been the best side in that competition for three or four years now. Birchett Watcham uh, have taken it right up to them this year, finished on top of the ladder. It'll go down to uh, the final kick of the day, but Birchett Watcham just. So a big senior game to come, the under-18s winners to Gisborne, the reserves winners is Stratfield Say, and the big senior contest is to come here at the QEO. It is shaping up to be an absolute beauty in the first semi-final. Stratfield Say takes on Golden Square. After this, myself, John Hunter and Norm Jenkin, where local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo.
Oval, it is first semi-final day, Strathfield say and Golden Square, the last Sunday of finals footy before we move into the prelim final next week. The under-18s have got their prelim final confirmed. It will be Gisborne taking on Golden Square in the reserves next Saturday. The prelim final is Gisborne versus Strathfield say Sandhurst have got both of those sides already into the grand final, so they'll be watching on. But their senior side will be having a close eye on this game today because they will be back next week, Sandhurst, to take on the winner of this game with Gisborne through to the grand final. So a big day already halfway through the storm are one up on golden square in the reserves football but the senior football promises to be an absolute cracker and also we should mention white hills footy club norm yesterday before we mentioned all the other leagues we didn't mention that they were able to clean sweep the 18s reserves and they also happen to win a b reserve netball grand final as well so a terrific effort for the white hills footy club in heathcote district footy league yes it was excellent for white hills they've been on top of the ladder all year it was their grand final to uh, lose and uh, to their credit they were able to uh, perform on the day and uh, and get themselves a, a well-earned premiership uh, now Jack Fallon's done a, an excellent job out there with for White Hills over a couple of years. Unfortunately for White Hills, moving on next year. And wow, uh, wow, had that been fully confirmed yet, Norm? Well, I'm hearing that that's that's the case. We'll have to wait and see. It's all over the socials, though. But um, yes, it'll be interesting to see how many players uh, go with Jack uh, where he's moving on to and. Uh, and what the situation's like at White Hills for 2025. Might be a bit like the Broadford rumour. I think we all know it's possibly happening, but it's not 100% locked in just yet, but a very good chance it does does happen. John Hunter, really looking forward to this game in the senior football this afternoon. How do you see this one playing out, and what are you seeing as some key factors in this game for either side? Well, first I'm going to put my hand up, uh, Cam, to say that pre-season it was Golden Square. I wrote them off. I thought that after a two a turbulent off-season that they they would um, hit rock bottom. And when yeah. I say rock bottom, I thought they were going to tumble out the eight, yeah. uh, the five. But yeah. um, nothing could be further than the truth. Coming into the side uh, during in and out of the year, but uh, they're a constant now. Monty, um, R Ricky Monty, a Tom super Tomer. player. Tom Tomer. They certainly give them some... Um, some real run and carry through the middle and they, they bring a little bit of a toughness to the game. The only thing that worries me about the Storm is their ability to kick goals. Since they've lost Lachlan Sharp, I mean, it's always going to be big shoes to fill, but uh, the games that I've seen Storm struggling, it, it was that conversion down front. So it'll mean... Well, they did have Shishka that filled that hole pretty well, but unfortunately he's not out there with a really bad broken ankle. So yeah, 100%. A lot of gonna... pressure does go to Malik Gordon. Go to Malik Gordon. Perhaps Gordon can... Um, sorry, uh, um... Mallet Gordon and Zach Charles, but potentially he could have a roll down forward. Whether or not they um, choose to put the big ruckman down there in Ernst to give them a, a bit of body, but certainly their potent potency down forward really worries me. And Norm, I'm going out on a limb, I think, well, maybe not if you're a Golden Square supporter, but I, after being on um, the Storms bandwagon all year, I think that they might get beaten today. I reckon Golden Square might have a pretty good game. They seem to move the footy pretty well across um, halfback as well. The rebound they get from Jonathan Coe and company, I, I just feel that they're in better shape at the moment than the Storm. Yes, yeah, got to agree with you there, John. Uh, Golden Square, for me, they look to have... Uh too much talent on all lines. Uh, their defence, very strong with the likes of Coe, Threlfall and the Burke boys down back. They're all in good form and uh, and all for the last three or four weeks been playing uh, very good football. Uh, as you said, Tomer and Monty back in. Uh, they're uh, integral parts of the midfield of uh, uh, Golden Square and they add to the depth with uh, Rosengren, uh, Eaton and uh, James. They've been very good in recent weeks. Rosengren last week, they were in trouble a little bit early and uh, he certainly put his hand up and got them moving. Uh, up forward, Stross and Stewart, uh, along with Hurd, are, are in good form. And uh, a big advantage for me, I, I see with Square, is that they've got two mobile ruckmen in Rayner and Daniels who will uh, alternate from the forward line uh, through the ruck and... Uh, they're, uh, they're very dangerous, so for me, that's why Golden Square will get the job done. Uh, Strath Maristian, uh, Strathfield say sorry. No, I'm cricket, are you? <laughs> I've, I've already gone the, the next season. I've hey, written everything I'm, up for you. 
Harcourt's out of the final, so Norm's already moved on to the moved cricket. To cricket yep. Well, I'm going against you two. You guys are going Golden Square, but I'm sticking with Stratford. So they've beaten Golden Square twice this year during the regular season, and I just think that if you can get the wood over a team twice. I know you've got some big inclusions in this Golden Square side, but I'll, I'm liked what Stratfield say have done on a more consistent level across the season. Uh, I'm still going to stick with Stratfield say to win this game. And if for that to happen, though, I'm expecting Tim Hosking to have a huge impact. And Kai Daniels, who has probably got stake on the most improved player in the competition for Golden Square, Tim Hosking just has to absolutely nullify his impact today. And if he does that, that'll go a long way to the Storm winning the game. And I just think that they'll be able to get some out of blokes um, with Hosting being back in the side, it really does allow Caleb Ernst to possibly go forward and give him that other body inside the forward line. So I'm tipping Streffield say to win this one, uh, Johnny Hunter. So looking forward to it. Um, also, the umpires today, we must mention them as well. Dean Goodridge, John Norton and Jack Anderson. They've gone the three and uh, one really, ex well, two experienced mm -hmm. in Norton and Dean Goodridge. So that's interesting they've gone the three today, Norm. Well, uh, they've got the advantage to go the three today with uh, with no other finals being played in the uh, in the Central Vic region and uh, we'll all see three again next Saturday and in the grand final so it's an excellent situation for Stratham Golden Square to be in having the three umpires out there which will continue through the rest of the finals. And for what it's worth Cam, I think the umpires yesterday did a very, Absolutely. very good job. It's not often you come away and you don't really notice the umpires and yesterday we didn't notice them and that's a good sign. They were, they were really consistent yesterday so hopefully they'll keep up their good film throughout the game this afternoon. Now Cam, also um, I did mention uh, running through the midfield he's come from uh, Eagle Hawk but I reckon uh, Heard uh, wearing number one. I, I reckon he adds a little bit of toughness going through the middle. Do you see that when you look at Golden Square as well? Uh, I think he adds that little bit extra, but I'm not sure he breaks into that midfield too much today when you add Toma and Monty back in there. But he does definitely add a little bit of hardness to him, but I'm really impressed with Jack Trolfer from Golden Square playing out there back line role. He's really improved this year, so of course played in the reserves grand final so, and played in the reserves grand final two years ago, which they won. Played in the senior grand final, which they won. So he's gunning for three premierships in a row on an individual level if Golden Square to stay alive. The other big one, you spoke about adding toughness. It's Terry Reeves, 50 games today for Golden Square as well, and he's the ultimate player that brings toughness to that side, John. Yeah, he does. Um, they've been super consistent. Uh, key matchups, can you see anybody going to uh, Monty in particular or Tome and Norm? Well, I, I think through the midfield, uh, Strath will... Uh, They'll look to go it alone. Uh, Clossy Gill, Mulquinney have all been in good form, and I think that uh, they will continue today. And, and I think that they will they'll play their own game and, and hope that that's good enough. If there is a chance, I think Lockie Gill might be a chance to go to Toma. So they come into the middle now, the two captains. It's Jaden Burke and Lockie Ratcliffe from the Storm. The toss has been... They're looking for the, co uh, the coin in the mud by the looks of it. Dean Goodridge picks it up and gives a bit of a wipe. I actually didn't even see which way they signalled. Uh, uh, Lockie on Ratcliffe won it, and then he's going to the, city end. to the city end. I'll have to send out a memo, I think, Cam, that uh, they need to signal a little bit better. It was really quick. I was watching them, and uh, all of a sudden, bingo. <laughs> well, there was one two weeks ago where both captains pointed at the same time, so that gives us, oh, absolutely, still not over that that gives us absolutely no hope up here to oh, predict who's going geez. to do that. And that was Lucky Ratfield that won that one, too. Uh, yeah. Cliff, Cliff, uh, really, Rat Cliff, yeah. Realistically, though, whoever wins the toss is going to be kicking to the Bendigo City end, so it's a bit of an advantage. How many goals do you reckon you see that breeze playing as today, Norm? Uh, it's only a couple of goal breeze at this stage. We haven't seen any more than two or three goals kicked a quarter uh, in all the other games today and it hasn't been a strong strong wind like it's been in recent weeks it's uh, it's only been a breeze trees over near the scoreboard hardly moving but it is of a benefit to the team kicking to the city end. Well, I went for a walk out there before and it was a little bit uh, stronger when I went there. I would have called it a wind when I went out there. But regardless, the whole final series, it's been, I won't say marred by the wind, but the wind has played a role to the city end every single day. And I think today is going to be the same. We've got a little bit of rain showers forecast, only one to two mil, but that's probably coming in a little bit later in the day. So it might make it slippery for just a fraction of time. But... Um, Certainly, I, I don't think overall. Uh, it just depends on whether you can get a fast start kicking with that win, Norm. That, that's probably the key, I'd reckon. Well, it is. It's, uh, it's up to Strath now to put the score on the board early and, uh, and put scoreboard pressure on Golden Square. We'll see how Golden Square handle that. In recent weeks, they've been the front runners and put the, uh, 
scoreboard pressure on the opposition. So uh, Sa uh, Strath have the chance today to uh, change that. They can put scoreboard pressure on and uh, have Golden Square chasing. It's the first semi-final being played on this Sunday at the home of country football, the QEO. The loser will be eliminated today and the winner will go on to play Sandhurst next week. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. It's the Storm playing Golden Square. Here's Cameron Power. So it'll be umpire Jack Anderson, which will get us underway. Daniels and Hosking, one down. Toma gets the first clearance, but they have to go backwards to Burke. Burke to Trelfel. He bounced off a little bit of a tackle. Helen and then got a hold of him, which turned it over. Wilson for the Storm, fires it inside forward 50. Boat Stevens got some space. He set it towards the top of the square, bouncing away from Malik Gordon. And the first score of the day will be a minor to Boat Stevens and the Stratfield say Storm a one. Golden Square yet to score. And just like yesterday, we have a score on the board inside 30 seconds of the opening quarter. Yeah. Score sponsor, Ruling Outdoors, Castlemaine. And Zach uh, Shelton has got the job on Malik Gordon uh, down back for Golden Square. Twelve a short pass to Monty. Barely went the required distance. Monty was on his knees for the dogs. They look to go down swimming pool side, which they seem to be doing that every game we come here. It's certainly the wing that they think is the advantage. Now the ball goes beyond 50. It's at ground level. 70 from goal. The storm in attack. Hurried kick out of the pack. It comes inside forward 50 shallow. It comes from Blanford. Now it'll be Golden Square. They'll mop up off defensive 50. Long kick to the wing and it's a bouncing footy. That it is. It'll come out. rainer has gone after it for them. And going through for the storm will be Jackson Lay. He fired out the handball. Went in the direction of Ernst. Free kick storm. So Shannon Geary was at the bottom of the pack. He might have been collected a little bit high. He receives the free kick. He's got Ernst short if he wants it. Decides to go more inboard and he finds Clossy. So Clossy's in the middle of the QEO here for Stratfield say. He'll then wheel onto his right and send a high ball inside forward 50 in the Gordon direction. Just didn't quite carry. This ball spills off hands. Strosh back there for Golden Square. Couldn't take it. Wilson front and centre. Roves the ball. And Wilson snaps around his body and kicks the first for the Storm. Hot start Stratfield say. Riley Wilson gets the first goal on the board. They're 117. Square have hardly touched it. Opening quarters of the opening minutes of the first quarter. Score sponsor JB Restumping. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. Score sponsor. Yes, good kick from Shannon Geary there. He put it into the hot spot. Centre half forward. The pack form. Ball was knocked forward and it was Riley Wilson. He was uh, he was forward of the marking contest and he had a clear path towards goal. No Golden Square opponent beside him. Hosking in the ruck now for the Storm against Ernst. Uh, sorry, up they go in the ruck. It was Daniels, in fact. Now, one too high it goes to Golden Square to Macy Eaton. So their first push forward here is Golden Square. It's a long ball. It'll be inside forward 50 for the Dogs at 50. Contested footy, ground level. Still no extraction of the footy. Shannon Geary tried to shovel it out and couldn't. Gets it trapped in there. Right on the 50 mark now. Golden Square in attack. Barnard Street end. Golden Square Trail, he had to hit the scoreboard. The Storm 117. Three minutes gone, opening term. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. Eaton handballs off. It'll be Reeves that'll then, uh, Brody James that'll send it towards the top of the goal square off hands. Shannon Geary happy to see it through for a minor score. So Square's first score, a minor. Geary then quickly brings the ball back into play. He'll send it out the far wing looking for Jones. Jones couldn't take it, comes off hands. Then he got it back on a 1 2. He's got a short pass down the line which will go to Bode Stevens. Stevens will mark and look to send the Storm inside 50. Here they come again, it'll be the Storm. They've started well. Inside forward 50, they'll set themselves. The target will be Charles. Didn't get his hands quite on the footy. Ground level. The dogs need to be careful. Frecknelton tries to put it in the path of Stross with a handball who taps it over the boundary line cleverly. And right in front of the scoreboard here, we'll have a ball in. In attack, the Storm. They lead by six points, three and a half gone. This opening term sponsored by Central Kitchens in Bendigo. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. Andrew umpire heaves the ball a long way back inside. Off hands, Clossy goes through for Storm, picked it up. He sold some candy, Dan Clossy, and he goes goalwards. Daniel Clossy kicks the Storm second. It's a hot start, Stratfield say. They've got two on the board. They're 2-1, 13. Golden Square, one minor. Early stages of this one, but it's a good looking Stratfield say early. Score sponsor, Bendigo City Framers. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. Yes, the Strath boys have certainly come to play this afternoon. Uh, they're getting numbers to the football, numbers to the fall of the ball, and uh, Clossy stepped through traffic too easy then. Golden Square player tried to uh, tried to tackle or bump instead of tackling, and he was able to step through easy. Back in the middle, it'll be Hosking against Daniels again. Daniels couldn't quite collect the footy for the dogs. Stevens doing some hard work in there for the storm. 
and we'll have a stoppage again smack bang in the middle of the QEO. Umpire will throw it up. Daniels against Hosking. Hosking of the Storm wins the tap. Hurried kick out of the pack. It came from Sheen of the Storm. It goes to half forward. Tracking the foot of Ubi Charles. Charles now, well, he lost it in the end. Causes a turnover and off half back. The dogs are away. They do, but the kick will be turned over on the wing. Jackson Lay couldn't quite control the inner high tackle, mark, but he will receive a free kick for being caught high. It's against Jack Sampson. So Jackson Lay, centre wing position, pull side of the QEO. Chips it down the line. Well, the kick didn't really go to anyone in particular. Bounced in front of a couple. Streff would say player taken without the ball. It'll be Charlie King will receive a free kick. He wastes no time sending it up in the direction of Bode Stevens, who's strong above his head, Bode Stevens. Ten games for North Melbourne in the VFL this year, so he's very experienced as Bode Stevens. He'll wheel around onto the right. He'll go goalwards from outside 50. He's put it near side on a score. He's got two minor scores on the board. It's 2-2-14 two, two, playing Golden Square. One behind, five and a half gone. In the opening quarter, score sponsor JB Reese Stumping, where local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. Yes, it's, uh, it's good signs to see Bodie Stevens uh, getting plenty of the ball early. He was down a little bit last, uh, last weekend, and uh, when he's up and about, Strath is certainly a better-looking side. Trailfall will do the kicking in for the dogs, just waiting for the footy to be returned. So it's a 13-point margin here. The Storm leading, and I reckon that wind's uh, really lifted up. If you have a look at the poppet head, there's some gum trees there that are really swaying in the breeze. So starting to have an effect now. Trailful will go swimming pool side again. It goes beyond 50. Hands on the footy again. It will be the Storm. It'll be a turnover. A whistle on play, or is it allowed to go on? There is a whistle. Free kick, Golden Square. So it'll go to the Dogs. Free kick to Sampson. Sampson short pass to Daniels. Daniels on right half back, 15 metres in from the boundary line. Swimming pool side, kicking to the Barnard Street end. He goes down the line, a 40 metre ball, and he's hit it up the target in Macy Eaton. So Eaton has it, centre wing. Will high ball it inside forward 50. And a big fly from Toma. And he brings it down inside forward 50 from the back of the pack. He gets up, wastes no time, sending it in the Burke direction. Hard out on a lead. In fact, it's actually fallen short of him and it's going to be marked and it'll be a chance for goal for Jack Trollful. Well, Jack Stewart, I should say. I got the wrong Jack, but it's Jack Stewart inside forward 50. Jack Trollful's up the other end of the ground. Jack Stewart will go inside for goal number 50 for his tally this year, Jack Stewart. He's kicked 49 goals. It's his second year in senior football, having a big influence inside this Golden Square forward line. Jack Stewart. 40 out, pretty much directly in front against the breeze. Bendigo City, Barnard Street, end of the ground, and he kicks it through for a goal. Jack Stewart to Golden Square on the board. They're 1 1 7. The Storm are two goals, 2 14. It's early stages of this one in the opening quarter, but a goal against the run of play for Jack Stewart. Score sponsor, Daily Brick Lane and Construction. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. Yes, good ball movement by Golden Square there. A lovely kick in and a lovely pack mark by Tommy Tomer. There was about four or five in that marking contest and he was alert and quick enough to uh, centre the ball straight out in front of goals to a leading Stewart. So back in the middle we go. Up they'll go in the ruck. Hosking wins it for the Storm. They've started off well here. They'll win it again. A long ball. It'll go inside forward 50. The ball uh, came in from it was Clossy. Inside forward 50. They've got the numbers. Swooped on it. Goes goalward. And it's just off line. The ball came from Riley Mulquinney and it comes for a minor score. So the Storm go to 15, leading Golden Square 7. Eight and a half gone, opening term. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. So Trollful off the ground, so he's on the bench. So Zach Shelton gets the kick in duties. He quickly plays on. And, well, it was a tough ass for John Coe underneath the scoreboard. Pressure came from Stevens. Coe had to really relieve the trouble there and he was able to dribble it out of there. It comes off hands for a boundary throw in. Yes, we're in for an entertaining game if uh, play continues like this today with uh, with both sides moving the ball quick. Yes, they really love to have Trollful on the ground in the, those kick-in situations though, the square. Throw in, Daniels took it out of the ruck, handballed it to Rosengrin, Rosengrin to Toma, and Toma gave it off to Kelly, back to Toma, to Humphrey. Humphrey comes wide, finds us in the direction of Holt. They'll go through the middle of the ground. Holt puts it out in front of Stewart. Got a bad bounce though for Stewart. Lester come through to lay the tackle, but he got Stewart a little bit too high, according to umpire Jack Anderson. So Stewart will then step around Lester on the mark. 
He'll send it inside forward 50. Burke's going to have to come from behind to take the mark. It spills to ground level. Humphrey goes hard at the footy. He was taken, and we will have a ball up. No, in fact, umpire Goodbury just picked out a free kick. Must have been something off the ball there. I'm not too sure, Norm, but it's a free kick to the 50. Storm and 50-metre penalty because Humphreys did not give the ball to Dan Clossy. Clossy will receive a 50-metre penalty. I did see, Norm, what happened to Clossy. He got a little punch, a kidney punch in the back, and umpire Goodridge uh, picked it up, and then there was a bit of lip which caused the 50. Now the ball is kicked to half forward, and Shelton has taken... It's either a mark or a chopping of the arms, but for the dogs, left half back. Broadcast side, just in front of us, 15 metres in from the boundary line. It's a 15 metre ball, lucky to be. And right near the coach's box in front of us, which belongs to Golden Square this afternoon, Zach Westcott. Oh. Short pass, it was a poor kick forward. He looked for Reeves. And a big fist in there, nicely by Jai Chambers of the Storm. Put a fist on it, over the boundary line, we'll have a ball in across half forward, Storm in attack. Yes, Westcott had to keep that ball low then uh, to get it to his teammate. No good up in the air, gave Strath every opportunity to spoil, which they did. So Hosking back in the side for the Storm. Big Mackman, he works his way to the front of Daniels and he wins the tap down. But it fell to Brody James who was tackled straight away by Wilson. It's banged out of there by Jackson Lay. Right to the top of the square. Chance here for the Storm. It didn't quite work though. And it will go to ground level. And we'll have a ball up inside forward 50. It was Riley Mulquinney at the bottom of the pack. Ball up. Almost at the top of the goal square here. At the Bendigo City end, knock forward. Chance here for the Storm. Trying to go through was Caleb Sheen. He threw his oh, head back. Lumpy. And he's received a free kick for too high. And, well, it will be a free kick directly in front of goal for Caleb Sheen. He was caught high. Yes, uh, an interesting decision there for mine. Uh, he was the one that ran into the Golden Square player. The Golden Square player didn't run into him. Still collecting him high though, Norm Jenkins. Caleb Sheen, 15 out directly in front, kicks the Storm's third goal of the game. 3 3, 21, Streffield say, Golden Square, 1 1 7. 11 and a half minutes played in the opening quarter. Sheen now becomes the third goal scorer on the ground for the Storm. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. Score sponsor, Don Smallgoods, is Don, is good. Yes, uh, it may well have been uh, a high tackle, but uh, it wasn't a uh, forceful high tackle. I believe both players hit chest on chest and then the Strath player threw his, uh, threw his head back. And uh, well done to him to get the free kick and get the goal on the board. So it's a 14-point margin here. The Storm lead. B grade in the netball have completed, which is Kangaroo Flat. Four goal winners over the Storm, 52 to 48. Still a reserve to come. Storm playing Meribara and in A grade at 320. Kangaroo Flat play Eagle Hawk as we come back into the centre now. The Storm have got this one under control. Hosking in the ruck's got it under control as well. He picked up the footy after he won the tackle, but then lost it, and it causes it a turnover. Contested footy. Terry Reeves gets his hands on the ball. Also, Westcott too high. Umpire Goodridge calls it. It'll go to the Dogs to Reeves. Reeves now on that familiar left on his 50th senior game this afternoon. He goes into the pocket. It's a good, strong lead. He honoured it, and he hit uh, right on the uh, chest was Jack Sampson. And on a pretty tight angle, he'll probably line them up here, Norm. Well, he's well within kicking distance here, and the breeze would favour him here. Uh, kick towards the left-hand goal post and just let the breeze carry it across. In the shadows of the ghost of the blood social rooms. Did that make sense, Cam? I reckon it did if, if you're you an old-time yesterday, listen. you would know exactly what Oh, the about. kick smothered. He went too close to the man on the mark. Clossy did well. Now the ball spills to halfback. Picked up by Stevens. He's got a teammate running shotgun. They're working nicely here. The Storm. It was Kelly that kicked it in the direction of... Uh, it, Charles, Charles inside forward 50, goes to Malik Gordon, picks it up, 35 out, shrugs off a tackle, he goes the banana, it's swung a long way but not enough, he started it too far left and puts it through for a minor score, exciting stuff by the score storm, they lead 22 to Golden Square 7, 13 and a half gone opening turn. Yeah that was good work by Zach Charles there, he had two Golden Square players around him and instead of taking hold of the ball he just knocked it forward to Malik Gordon's advantage. So Troffle back on the ground will do the kicking duties for Golden Square. Chips it short underneath the scoreboard. Mark taken. Terry Reeves in game 50 this afternoon. He'll go short again. Presenting out Brody James takes the mark for Golden Square. Game number 51 for him. Of course, celebrated his 50th game last week. So a couple of 50-game Golden Square players linking up there. Down the line he goes. Burke comes out, couldn't take it, but he brought it to the front of the pack. Handball forward, but it's all Storm at the front of the pack. 
It's taken forward by Geary. Geary to Wilson. Wilson tackled as soon as he received the footy of a ball up. 60 out from goal where the Stratfield say Storm are heading to the Bendigo City end. Cross half forward, left half forward, swinging pool side, Storm in attack. They've got the advantage of it. A bit of a wind here at uh, the QEO again for, and well, a fourth time in a row as Eaton gets one too high for the Dogs. Cross half back now. He'll spread it wide to the uh, wing. Swimming pool side, good strong mark claim, but not given to Burke. Turnover now, Shannon Geary by hand to Stevens. The footy bounce, but Steven had enough time to kick it. Pick it up and kick it. Put it inside, forward 50, poor kick. Double fister by Tom Strosh of the Dogs. Puts it over the boundary line in front of the scoreboard where the Storm are in attack. They lead 22 to 7, 15 gone. Opening term sponsored by Central Kitchens in Bendigo. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. Underneath the scoreboard, throw in. Knocked down, taken away by Strosh, handballed off to Westcott. Westcott will then handball further forward to James, and James will send it down the pool wing. Kick just over, carried its teammate. It stays in play for Caleb Burns, who's happy to probably see it over in that situation. So a throw in, centre wing position, pool side area of the QEO. Good crowd in attendance as well on a Sunday afternoon, the last Sunday of finals footy before we move into just Saturday next week in the prelim. Clossie won the ball out of the stoppage. He sent it forward. Flying through there was Charlie King, and he's assisted over the boundary line for a boundary throw in about 70 metres out from goal for the Stratfield Say Storm. Who, of course, they did get the job done earlier today in the reserves over Golden Square, winning that game 7 12 54 to the square, 4 5 29. The wind has picked up here to the city end. The Storm have got the advantage. Reeves won it for the dogs off half back, then lost it, fumbled the footy. 70 from goal now. They dive in after the footy, trapping it in there with Jackson Lay for the Storm. Did well. We'll have another ball up. 22 playing seven. It's the Storm. City end. They're in attack. It goes inside forward 50. Picked up by Shelton. His kick, well, it was ineffective. Chambers did well to uh, tackle him from behind. Hurried kick now goes by James to Golden Square. It's a poor kick, and he kicked it straight to Hallinan of the Storm. Hallinan goes inboard. Leicester. Takes the mark. He was in a contest with his own person, but he gave it off to Ratcliffe, who was tackled straight away. Just got the handball out. It comes back forward to Murphy. Murphy sends it inside forward 50. Jones would have got it on the chest, but flying in front, knocking the ball to ground was Tom Strosh. It's received by Hurd. Hurd to Toma. Jones still lurking for the Storm. He goes backwards. The Storm will send it inside forward 50. Trofel playing the gatekeeper role for Golden Square. Takes the intercept mark. He'll quickly wheel it out to the grandstand side. But the kick doesn't do many favours for Sampson. He lets it bounce, which allows Freckleton to come through. Freckleton picks up the footy, sends it straight down the line. And it was marked by Patrick Blanford before it floated out of bounds on the full. Blanford inboard finds Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe now got time and space. He'll send it inside forward 50. Horrible copter ball it went. Gave none of his teammates an opportunity to mark it. King had his hands on the footy and couldn't collect. Now a stoppage forms, ground level. Umpires letting it go. Still 40 from home. King for the storm. Shovels a handball out to defense, uh, forward 50. But Reeves intercept. Did well. Give it to a teammate in Toma for the dogs. Goes to Rosengrant, who's forward of centre now. Golden Square. They'll break through Jaden uh, Burke. Burke running with the flight of the ball. Inside forward 50. Shallow running with the flight. Takes a nice mark and he'll line them up to the Barnard Street end. Yes, good work by Golden Square then. Uh, they only had one bloke forward of the football and, and that was Rosengrant. Uh, Rosengrant. They, um, he got the ball and he was able to hold on to it long enough to wait for Jaden Burke to run into space. 45 degree angle. He's on the broadcast side to the Barnard Street end. Crosses the paint mark of 50, 45 degree angle. Tough to kick goals from there. We've seen this in this final series. The wind gets it by a long way, nearly pushes it out of hands on the full. It started straight, just snuck in for a minor score. Dogs go to 1-2-8. They trail 3-4-22, 18 and a half gone. Opening term. Local footy lives in Fresh Bendigo in this first semi-final. He's didn't the wind really get hold of that. Blanford brings the ball in, sends it down. Jones got a fly at it, couldn't take it. It was Charles in front for the Storm. They handball off. Now they'll send it straight down the line, but Trolfel takes the intercept mark for Golden Square. He'll quickly wheel and go. Brody James presents on the far wing. Pull side of the QEO, he marks. Then he slows up and steadies one, and his kick is an absolute shocker. Straight to Caleb Sheehan, who floated in front of his intended target. Sheehan wastes no time. He finds Wilson, who just come on the ground. Wilson's got space. He'll have a bounce. Then he'll run his 15. He'll send it inside, forward 50 in the Gordon direction. It just didn't quite get there. And tracking back with him was also Riley Mulquinney, but he couldn't get there. The kick just carried a little bit in the breeze. 
Boundary throw in, right hand forward pocket, hard up against the behind post. Stratfield says Storm in attack. Yes, right option by Riley Wilson there. Just a little bit too much beef on the uh, on the kick and it just carried too far. Umpire will throw it in. Deep in attack here, the Storm. They're pressing. They've got a 14 point lead. The ball was allowed to bounce. Umpire let it uh, play go on. Now we're 40 from goal still. Still in attack for the Storm. The ball, it's a rolling pack. It will be a stoppage. They've moved from probably 30 metres laterally to have another ball up north. Yes, uh, I believe that Golden Square would be happy with this uh, start so far. Only two goals down against this win. It's balled up uh, balled up, and then uh, goes beyond 50. It'll be Burke who wins it now for the Dogs. Hurried little handball. It's ineffective. Humphrey got collared and tackled. And halfway between the centre and almost left half forward. The Storm in attack. Swimming pool side will have a ball up. 14-point margin. Storm lead. 20 minutes ticked over opening turn. Lester tabbed it down. Sheehan roved it. He sent it inside forward 50 for the Storm. Gordon couldn't quite take it. Wilson will then barge through for Stratfield. Say ball hits the bottom of the pack. Spilling out. Thomas there for the square. Humphrey then received it. He handballed further forward. Brody James will emerge with a footy, but a free kick will be going against Ben Lester. It's going to come back to Lockie Humphrey for Golden Square across half back. And he will take the 20 seconds he's allotted to kick the footy. He'll kick it towards the boundary oh, line. Oh, oh. Shocker. Oh, oh. He made James work for it. And it's either James might have just got a fingernail to it. He, he did. So it will be a ball in across half forward. So poor error in the dying moments of this opening term here. Storm attacking. They'd love one just before quarter time. It'll be Lester in the in the ruck it was allowed to bounce again now cross half back the dogs will win it humphrey's running shotgun received a handball he'll go 10 meter handball backwards in order to go forward that was effective they'll get away with it here short pass ended up with humphrey it came from rosen grant and humphrey defensive side of center wing 15 meters in from the uh, boundary line will have a fr uh, mark and short pass he's racking up the possessions in this quarter humphrey shits the short pass and finds burke so Burke got it. It was a chip pass. He then sends it into the middle of the ground where he finds James. James right in the middle of the QEO. Will send the high ball inside forward 50. Ratcliffe comes charging at it for Golden Square. Free kick for a block off the ball, I'm thinking there, Norm. I think the umpire saw a slight push in the back. The uh, Strath player just got into his, uh, his opponent's back and just gave him a little nudge as the ball was coming into the area. Well, if there's anyone from Golden Square who would love to have the ball in the hands of, it's this man, Tom Tomer. And he's 35 out directly in front, Tommy Toma. Five games for Golden Square in the seniors this year. He's managed to kick 14 goals in those five games. So this for his 15th goal, 25 out directly in front. He stabs at it to the right, and it stays right, minus score. So they move to 1-3-9 now at Golden Square. Two to Storm, 3-4-22. Score sponsor, JB Reese Stumping. Blanford will kick it in, play on for the Storm from the Barnard Street end. Short pass forward, hits Harvey. Harvey still deep in his defensive arc for the Storm. Hasn't got much on offer. He'll go short pass forward, 25 to Leicester. Made him work, he had to slide on his knees. Gives a handball back to Harvey. They're messy in the back half here. Ratcliffe puts them under pressure. Westcott swoops on the footy. It's a turnover. Dogs, short pass, barely went five metres. Umpire agreed. He marked it, a non-mark at 45. Umpire jumped on top, top of that uh, decision. He tried to claim it there, Sampson. Jack Sampson, the Dogs, didn't get it and will it be a ball up. Umpire Goodrich throws the ball up right on the paint of 50. Monty going through and high tag collected high Ricky Monty, so he'll receive the free kick. 55 out from goal. He'll then send it into a lead. Not effective though. Knocked away from the storm. It comes back to Truffle. Truffle's little short pass was good to the top of the 50. Mark taken by Harrison Kelly. 55 metres out from goal, Harrison Kelly. He'll wheel around onto the right foot, send it into the right pocket. Tomer will come out the kick. Really favoured Riley Wilson and Streffield say Storm. And with those slightly dodgy hammies, he dives out and takes a nice slips catch. Does Riley Wilson, and he'll bring him out of trouble for the Stratfield say Storm. Wilson, he'll cross laterally, deep in his back zone from one pocket to the other. It's safe to Leicester. Leicester now, he just buys a bit of time. He'll take up his required time. Umpire says you must kick it now, which he does. He kicks it to the contest. They fly. Back of the pack, Jones got hands on the football. It spills to the back of the pack. John, um, Dylan Hurd tries to keep it in for the dogs and can't. 
Boundary umpire says it's out of bounds. And on true centre wing position, broadcast side in front of us, it will be a ball in. And I reckon there's a little bit of rain brewing. Yes, the uh, sky's darkened a lot in recent times. The wind is absolutely blowing based on those trees on the far ground. Look at that one. It just groped in the breeze. It went five metres further forward towards the city end. Strosh received it for Golden Square. Sends it up in the direction of Sampson. It bounced away. Murphy handballs to Hallinan. Hallinan just roosts it into the middle of the ground. It might bounce fatally for the storm. Jones at the back knocked it further forward. Malik Gordon picked it up. He'll dribble one towards goal. It bounces forward for Malik Gordon, but it bounces truly to the left-hand side for a minor score. 3-5-23. Uh, the Stratfield say Storm 139 Golden Square. That wind is causing some trouble out there, Norm Jenkins. It is, and uh, the players are finding it hard to deal with the wind at this stage. You put the ball in the air and it's going towards the swimming pool side uh, with great monotony. Trail full play on from fullback. Trots off, then he'll send it swimming pool side. Oh, it holds up in that wind. It's really strong as we've alluded to. Now, Freckleton did well for the dogs, got a punch in there and put it over the boundary line. And 50 metres from home for the Storm. In attack, we'll have a ball in. And boy, oh boy, those trees are swaying in the breeze like Michael Bublé there. Cam, you know who Michael Bublé is? Michael sway. Bublé. Yeah, sway. Well, you get no, don't worry about it. So but, anyone watching the vision will see those trees. They are flying as the boundary umpire almost has to throw it in on a bit of an angle. It comes across the half back to Storm. So I was getting into the spray there, Cam. Some dodgy uh, effects going on there. Don't give up your day job, Johnny, as the ball goes up. Hosking couldn't win it down. Clossy tried to be claimed the tackle before he took possession of the ball. Umpire having a none of it. Umpire Norton knows all the tricks in the book. He didn't fall for that one. Ball up. Hosking down. Clossy couldn't quite take it. No one able to emerge through. Stevens for the storm went through. Managed to find out a little handball, Rosengren. He'll be at the bottom, that was a throw, but it worked out fatally for the Storm. Anyway, Lockie Gill finds some space. Gill from 45, out goes Goldwoods, misses. 3-7, three, 3-6 three, now the Storm, 1-3 the square. So it is tough conditions out there. Score sponsor, JB Restumping. Trollful kicked it in from full back into the pocket. Really up against it here. It is Toma. Against the wind, it holds up again. It goes beyond 50. Whistle on play. It'll be a free kick. Dogs. It'll go to Westcott. Right half back. Swimming pool side. 35 metre ball. Big fist in there by uh, Rosengren. Did well for the dogs. Season over the boundary line. He might have got a hold. Umpire said no. I'm going to ball in. Out of side. 24 playing nine. Storm lead. 27 minutes gone. Opening term. This opening term sponsored by. Central Kitchens in Bendigo. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. That's not me whistling. I was I was humming and singing, but not whistling. Free kick out of the throw-in. No, re-throw-in. Re re yeah, the boundary's not getting the ball in far enough, and the umpires have asked them to move closer. Yeah, tough conditions for a boundary umpire today. Oh, I don't reckon it's raining just yet because people aren't ducking for cover yet, Johnny, but it doesn't look like it's too far away. It's certainly darkened here. Storm will work it up towards Woodson half forward. Matt Harvey... Hasn't seen too much of it yet. He was able to paddle it forward. Storm will chip it inside and find Gill. Gill handballs over the top to Riley Mulquinney. Back to Gill. Gill's got Jones all alone in the goal square, but he just couldn't quite get it to him. He was definitely intending to, Lockie Gill. His second minor, and it is 3-7 now the Storm. 1-3 the square. And you just think the Storm haven't taken full advantage with this breeze at the no, moment. Now, you feel this inaccuracy may be costly later on in the game, but we've got to wait till both sides have used the breeze for a, a quarter each. That's definitely rain now, Johnny. It is. It's coming in at right angles. You can smell it. Smell it in the air. That was Cam You can before. see it as well. Now, Trelfel goes short into the back pocket. Speaking of smelling things. Yes, now Trelfel will receive the ball back. He's at the top of defensive square. They just need to kill a bit of time here because they're up against the conditions. They've done pretty well, I reckon, Golden Square. You're right, Norm. Three goals, seven the Storm. They'll be disappointed they haven't put them away because it's uh, definitely trying conditions. Freckleton goes short to Eaton of the Dogs. Runs around Riley uh, Wilson. Now the kick comes out to James. He's on uh, left half back for the Dogs and he'll kick it down the line. That he does. Shelton's going to have to come and sit in front of the pack and he takes a strong mark. 
Lamford come through to make him earn it. Gave it off to Toma. Toma on the left. That swings beautifully back for Monty. Just carried a little bit too much over the back of the pack. Storm will relieve. Hallinan just gets brute to ball. Dangerous though. Rosengren got a bad bounce. It bounces back to Trelfl. He also got a bad bounce. It favours the Storm. They're away. Sheehan up towards an R4, but Tom Strosh all on his own will take the intercept mark. Playing as a loose defender, Tommy Strosh. He'll wheel the kick out of the fence and he'll find Brody James who's transitioned onto this pool grandstand side. Wing. James had his hands on the footy a bit this afternoon in this opening term. James on the left holds up in the wind, then it swings. Really difficult conditions for Burke. He got a bit of it but couldn't mark it. Handball over the top, Fossey getting involved. Now it comes forward and the siren sounds as the ball bounces in front of us. Broadcast side, it is quarter time here in this first semi final. The Storm 3 7 25, they lead the Dogs 1 3 9. Yes, yeah, been a very good first quarter of football. Both sides are uh, keen to move the ball on at all costs, which is uh, inviting the opposition in for turnovers. But uh, to their credit, they've both been able to make the most of it. And I think Golden Square, they'd be happy with the situation. Uh, yes, they got one goal, which uh, is going to be worth gold at the uh, at the Barnard Street end. But they were able to only hold Straff to three goals. And three goals from ten scoring shots, plus a couple out on the full, uh, hasn't been a good first quarter for me for uh, for Strathfield say so they had the ball they had it in their control but they haven't been able to make the most of it well a strong breeze here at the QEO let's see what Golden Square can do with it in the second quarter plenty more to come here from the QEO it is game on in the second semi-final it is Strathfield say leading this game 25 to Golden Square 9 local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo the finals are now upon us let's have a look at the top five from the first week Number one, we kick it off. Thomas Timer here from Golden Square. Beautiful work, just using his pace. Got over the back, unloaded from 50. Got tackled at the same time as well and bounces it through. Number two, Jordan Rosengren here from Golden Square. Just a lovely mark, just showing his strength. Got to the front of the pack and took a big grab. Number three here, Shane Clough from Gisborne. This is a class finish. Outside of the boot from the boundary. Oh, yeah. It's Jack O'Shaughnessy here from Eagle Hawk. Pack your bags, get ready to take flight. This is an absolute hanger. Look at him go on the second grab as well. Secured it. Number five is Dylan Johnson here from Gisborne. He had five goals this afternoon. This is probably his best one. Plenty of pace to burn right on 50. Loads. Oh, yeah.
live Sunday afternoon football here at the QEO. It is Strathfield Say and Golden Square. And it is a do or die battle here in the first semi final where we will see the winner progress on to take on Sanders. Plenty of Sanders spectators here in the crowd watching on as well. It is the Storm 3-7 to Golden Square 1-3. The goal kickers in this game, it is Riley Wilson, Daniel Clossy and Caleb Sheehan for the Storm off of Golden Square. Jack Stewart has their only goal and with Golden Square having a look at some of their better players is John Hunter. I thought Macy Eaton at times got his hands on the football, did very well. Uh, Jack Stewart kicked a nice goal. Um, good work by him. And Lachlan Humphrey owned the footy for a while across halfback. He was getting possession after possession. Really impressed the way that he's fighting and going in for the football. And also Jack Sam uh, Sampson. So interestingly, Norm, names there that I mentioned that probably are not the more well-known name for the uh, dogs. No, whereas on the other side of the coin, uh, the, the more well-known names, uh, Riley Wilson, uh, Lockie Gill, Boat Stevens, uh, Daniel Clossy all had plenty of it in the first quarter. Tim Hoskin, a very good job in the ruck. He's uh, given the Strath Smalls uh, plenty of use first up and uh, also I like the way uh, Patrick Blanford's gone about it down back Yeah so a good game of footy in progress the breeze is still blowing quite heavily towards the Bendigo City and how many goals would you say it is based on that first quarter Norm? Well, if you looked at the first quarter, you'd say it's a, a two to three goal breeze, but I uh, wind. But I think it's uh, it's probably more four to five goals uh, at the strength that blew up at halfway through that quarter. But as it stands now, probably a three goal breeze. Yeah, it's probably more a wind than a breeze, as I should say. Waiting for our last spectators to get off the ground here. It's a good crowd in attendance for your Sunday afternoon. The second quarter is about to get underway, and to get the action, it is John Hunter. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo, the first semi-final, which was played on the second day of the semi-finals. So they get it round the other way, don't they, uh, Cam? As the umpire thro throws it up now, up they'll go. Hosking wins it against Daniels. Daniels didn't provide a contest, but it was won by Reeves of the Dogs. Left footer, it'll go shallow inside, forward 50. It's fans wide, he's looking for Burke. Ratcliffe did well for the Storm, puts it over the boundary line. 50 from home for the Dogs who are in attack. 25 playing nine. Storm lead, under 20 seconds gone, second term. There's some interesting Daniels at that first ball up. He went as though he was uh, going for the ruck contest, waited down and tried to rove it himself. This time he's going to go in a battle, carries over the back and then he got through, handball forward, Rosengrin goes after it as does Stewart paddling it forward, Toma, it spills to Kelly, ball's just playing havoc in the breeze, it's handball out of there by Ernst, Ernst to Sheehan, Sheehan then tried to go back to Ernst, ball paddles around at ground level, they're just trying to slap it forward any way possible here the Storm and eventually it'll be taken over by Ernst for a boundary throw in up against the left hand forward pocket. Underneath the scoreboard, poolside at the QEO, Golden Square in attack. One minute and three seconds gone in the oak in the second quarter. Umpire throws the ball back into play. One down by Hosking. He was up against Rayner. Strosh tried to go through with the footy, couldn't find a way through. Umpire crosses his arms and says, I oh, will ball it up. Umpire John Norton. Umpire throws it up. Up they go in the ruck. Hosking doing a good job. On that occasion, he was up against Rayner, who's been quite, pretty quiet. We'll have another stoppage. Whistle, ball up. Underneath the scoreboard, reads the storm leading 25 to 9. Hurried kick out of the pack came from Rosengren to the top good of the square. It's a mark! Running with the fly to the footy. Umpire didn't agree. I reckon Toma had heaps of that footy. He did, but it wasn't 15 metres. No, no well, you're, you're right, but it was... Um, was certainly spectacular at the top of the square. Umpire didn't muck around. He threw it up in the air. 20 metres out from goal. Hurriedly kicked out of the pack. It come uh, from Golden Square through Toma and he slammed it through. So it's now a 10 point margin. Score sponsor, Jason Westcott Builder. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. The Golden Square Dogs, they will now go to 2-3-15. They trail the Storm, 3-7-25. Two and a half gone, second term. Yeah, good start for the second quarter by uh, Golden Square. They've got the use of the breeze. They got the first clearance out of the centre. They were then able to lock the ball in their forward line and, uh, and make the most out of every opportunity they got. So back in the middle we go. Hosking wins it down for the Storm. Coming through Murphy, couldn't take it. Firing through for the square, come to Rosengrin. Rosengrin sends it inside, forward 50, punched away by Ernst to Hallinan. Hallinan just spotted Gill out the corner of his eye and then he crossed 
the body, kicked it, it landed in Gill's lap. Gill in the bright orange boots then goes forward on the left, sends it down towards Mulquinney. Mulquinney's being hunted by Hurd. Square turn it over, Burke to Trollful. Trollful to Kelly, who's now got some space. He'll chip a short pass and he'll find Jack Stewart, who will slow things up for Golden Square. I reckon they're lobster boots, by the way, for the record too, Cam. As the ball comes, handball to Trollful. Lobster colour, that is. Goes inside, forward 50. Oh, flying, flying eye there was Toma. To the back of the pack, though, Hallinan mops up. Short pass to a defensive top of the square to Leicester. Leicester now slow things down. He'll spread it to the outer side. Setting himself there for the storm was Jones. Comes off hands and he sees it over the boundary line. And we'll have a ball in. So we've crossed from one side of the ground to the other. Dogs in attack to the city end. They trail by 10 points. Four minutes gone. Second term. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. This term sponsored by Rural and Outdoors Castlemaine. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. And your umpire throws the ball back into play. It's not forward. And then we'll have a secondary ball up straight into the contest. Umpire Norton wastes no time throwing this one up. Hosky knocks it forward for Strath. Reeves back there for Square. Handball forward found Monty. Monty broke a tackle then gave it off to Stewart. Stewart snaps around the body inside 450. It's fell for Kelly who did a similar kick inside forward 50. Strosh is playing up the city end of the ground. He worked back in. He spotted the kick in board to Trollful but Lockie Gill read it like a book. And he intercepts, and he will clear it out of there for the Storm. He'll go in the direction of Malik Gordon, who's been pretty quiet in this contest so far. Yes, he's pushed up the ground now, and he's got it on his defensive arc of 50. 15 metres in from the boundary line, broadcast side. And he'll go laterally, goes corridor, 30 metres out directly in front from the goal he's defending now is Ernst. Ernst will now kick it back to Gordon, so they're playing kick to kick here. Now it's dangerous. Gordon was good enough though. Plays on, short pass forward. Makes his uh, teammate work. Couldn't quite get it, but they've got the numbers. Charles swooped on it there for the Storm. Puts it to half forward. Spills. Still, it's not, uh, not uh, a clear winner for the Storm. Diving in top of it. Players on top of it. Harvey did well, but Shelton picked it up now for the Dogs, and he spreads it wide. Yeah, it didn't look when he kicked the ball forward though. He's happy to clear it out of there, but it's Lockie Gill standing underneath it for the Storm. He'll chip to Leicester. Leicester will take the mark on his chest. Thought about keeping on going quickly, but rather smart, I think, to slow things up there. He'll then chip a short pass. He'll find its way into the hands of Jai Chambers, who's 70 out from Gold Chambers. He'll wheel a ball inside forward 50. Carries over the back of the pack. Almost sat for Murphy. Murphy picked it up, tried to send it through the pack. Went ground level. Kick was smothered. Spills out for the Storm to Shan. Shan goes around the body. He puts it across the face for a minor score. That was Caleb Sheehan. It is 3-8 Strath, 2-3 Golden Square. And they're just not taking the opportunities in front of the goals, Strathfield say. We saw it absolutely play Golden Square in a final series two years ago, being accurate inside. And it is the Storm's chance to do that today. Score sponsor, Central Kitchens, Bendigo. Trellful spins the footy in his hands at fullback. Then he runs, trots out of the defensive square. Kick from fullback, goes beyond 50. Burke will be his target. Comes to the pack of the pack. Turnover, Leicester by hand. Gives it to Blanford. Blanford of the Storm sends it shallow inside, forward 50. Gordon did well to put his fist on it. Tapped it into the path of his teammate in Stevens. Stevens of the Storm will go into the pocket. Poor kick. Mopped up by Jonathan Coe. Turnover. Harrison Burke tapped it towards the boundary line. Now beyond 50. Dogs need to be careful here. And they dive on top of the footy. Harvey did well there for the Storm, locked it in, and inside forward 50, Storm in attack, will have a ball up, the Storm lead 26 to 15 7 gone, second term, local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo Oh, free kick's been called here, square player might have been taken Yeah, he was grabbed hold of uh, before the ball, ball up the umpire happened to be watching and pinned the Strath player straight away well, it's Rosengren, who then sends the kick down the poolside wing fly from Rayner, couldn't take it. Ratcliffe tried to claim the mark. I think he thought that he did mark it. Lockie Gill also remonstrating that it should have been paid a mark. Umpire Goodrich having none of it. I think umpire Goodrich made the right, the right result there. The Golden Square player definitely had hands on it. 
Very experienced umpire, Goodrich. Throws it up in the air. Storm will send it forward out of the contest, but it's only to Truffle in the long sleeve. He just roots the high ball down towards centre half forward. Storm will have the numbers if it hits the ground, but Toma swooped on it. Toma from outside 50. He'll go goalwards. Tom Toma through for a minor score to the left. Jeez, he looks dangerous whenever he gets the footy, though, Tommy Toma. 2 4 16, Golden Square, 3 8 26, the Storm. Seven and a half minutes gone in the second quarter. Score sponsor, Jason Westcott, builder. Blanford will kick it in for the Storm. Sun shining here now at the QEO. Blanford plays on from fullback. You'll send it beyond 50, swimming pool side. They'll set themselves. Big fist, Trelfel did well. But uh, emerging from the footy will be Ernst. Ernst of the Storm puts it to the wing. His target will be Gordon. Can't find him as the ball goes over the boundary line on true centre wing position. Swimming pool side. 10-point margin. Storm lead. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. In the MCD now it is quarter time in the prelim final there. Trentham are 2 2 14. Lexton 2 straight 12. So a good game going on there. Hosking in the ruck, but it was won by Daniels. Off hands gives it to Toma. Toma of the dogs. A spiral inside forward 50. Poor kick. Kick it straight to the opposition. Paddy Blanford will mark it and then he'll play on and kick it wide. Plays a, a much bigger player than his size. Blanford sends it out to Chambers, who shrugs off the James tackle, emerge with it. Send it down towards Wilson. Trelfel got in to knock the ball to ground level. Picked up by Monty. Monty's little grubber kick up towards centre half forward. Helen and had to stretch high to grab it, but he did well. Handballed off to Matt Harvey. Matt Harvey gets it off to Shannon Murphy. Murphy's in the middle of the QEO. Good build up this for the Storm. He'll send it inside forward 50. He needs a fly. He got a massive fly. It was Bode Stevens. He didn't get anywhere near the footy though. That's the only downside. And he gives away the free kick. Golden Square will clear it out of defence to Tom Toma. But geez, he got up the ground then, Norm Jenkins. He did but unrealistic attempt. He was up miles too early and uh, took the Golden Square player out of the contest. Jai Chambers did well there defensively. The kick came to him and he put it uh, over the boundary line with a fist defensively. So it's now across left, it's left half forward. Storm in attack, kicking to the Barnard Street end. Broadcast side, sun shining here, but there looks like there's rain and wind around. So conditions constantly changing. Uh, changing. Eaton emerges, emerges with the footy for the dogs. Inside forward 50. It's a foot race. It'll be Lester versus Monty. Who will win this footy? Lester will cleverly see it as he slams into the point post. I'm not sure he got, got a shove. He might have just slipped, but boy, oh boy, he's done some damage to himself. Oh, I, I think reckon. there was definitely a shove there. As you're probably right. Uh, Norm, did you see what happened with it? No, I didn't actually. I was actually watching a young... Uh, Rainer come off the bench, uh, limping a little bit. And that is why we have the post padded. A padded post or the post padded? <laughs> Lester will send it beyond 50. He's okay, by the way, as you can gather from that. Good strong mark by Tommy Strosh. He'll send it shallow inside, forward 50. They're lining up, and one of them lining up is Monty. Monty's got a player breaking in Rosengren and probably hasn't. Really, might, might have gained a metre, Norm, but uh, I'm not sure they did gain a lot out of that. Maybe a metre, which might be enough in these conditions. Yes, uh, it's given uh, Rosengren a good uh, shot at goal now. He's, all he's got to do is aim at the right-hand goal post and let the breeze take the ball across the face. Well, oh, I'm an advocate for just kick it over the umpire's hat, Norm, so let's see who's right. So many times I reckon you see that they compensate and they overcompensate. Let's see what he does. Regardless, it's tough conditions. Rosengren... Distance won't be a problem. He gets underneath it. He started it right, Norm, and it swung beautifully like you predicted. So I'll give you that one. As the score sponsor this afternoon is Parsons Towing in Castlemaine. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo, so they move closer here now. The Golden Square Dogs, 3-4-22, four four-point margin. Storm, 3-8-26, 11.5 gone second term. And as we've seen here in recent weeks uh, broadcasting games at the QEO, your best op option of uh, kicking goals this city end is to attack through the uh, grandstand side. Both oppositions today have tried to keep, keep the opposition on the uh, attacking from the uh, pool side but it was uh, Golden Square that got the ball across to the grandstand side and made the most of it. In the middle we go. Gill tracks after it for the Storm. He's taken in the tackle, spills out, but it's Sheehan that picks it up for the Storm. He'll send it quickly inside forward 50. It should fall to the ever-reliable John Cohen defence who will play on. Handball back in board, finds Shelton. Shelton then further forward looking for Burke, I reckon, the original one, but it didn't quite find it to him. They knock it forward, free kick 
It's going the way of the storm, Norm Jenkins. Yeah, it's indi be indiscriminate, the Gill. indiscriminate kick. So Lockie, Lockie Gill, indiscriminate kick. That's an interesting one. Gill handballs off to Jones. Jones was tackled straight away by Stewart. Not sure on the handball option. They're forced to revert backwards to Blandford. Blandford then steps his way through trouble. He'll send it up towards centre-half forward. It's picked off by Holt of the Dogs, and he just hacks it out of there. Straight back to Blandford. And while that last 20 seconds of play was rather irrelevant because we're back where we started, John Hunter. Irrelevant or indiscriminate, either or either. As Blandford kicks it forward, 40-metre ball. It's a low under Strosh. Strosh intercepted. It's a turnover. Strosh plays on now from fullback. He comes corridor with an aggressive kick to Monty. Monty will now go long. 50-metre ball. That's a copter ball. It'll bounce inside forward 50. Rosengren, he probably tried to tap a ball that he should have grabbed, I reckon, if he had his time over again because the turnover is caught. Murphy, Murphy. He spreads it wide to both Stevens. So Stevens takes the mark in front of our broadcast spot, then chips it short to Cooper Jones. Handball over the top, Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe was under the hammer, so he had to send it forward, and he's kicked it straight to Shelton. So 20 to 20. That's not the time. That's player number 20 kicking it to Zach Shelton, who is also number 20 for Golden Square. So he'll send it up towards centre forward. Rosengren comes from behind. Might have knocked the ball out of Burke's hands. Picked up cleanly by Monty. Monty goes backwards to Daniels. Daniels then sends it inside forward 50. Stewart's got to take it, but if it hits the back of the pack, it'll be Toma running into an open goal. Good defensive mark for the Storm. And it's taken by Pat Blanford. And he will rebound the kick out of the fence for Strathfield save. You've got some fans there, Cam. The girls are waving to you down there at the front. That'll be the first time you've had a girl wave to you, I'd imagine. He's putting him off his footy as the ball comes beyond 50 to Bode Stevens. Got his, got his uh, hands on the footy. Cam gives him the old two-finger wave. Well, now a couple of them. One, one might be my cousin, so... Ah, uh, well. Which suburb are you from, Cam? That might make any difference as the ball comes from... <laughs> I won't mention any names as John... As... John Coe, John Coe put it over the boundary line and across half forward, dogs in attack, they're doing well, they trail by four points. I'm going to take it here still, Cam, because it's magnificent conditions now at the QEO. Sun is shining, I'm not sure how long it'll keep up for. Umpire throws it in, the wind does grab it, so that's an indication. Double-handed tap by the Storm in Hosking. Hosking puts it his feet, Strosh did well, handballs it now to Eaton. Eaton will get a free kick for one too high. Two kicks from home, kicking to the city end. So Macy Eaton right in front of us here, he'll wheel a short pass inside, 450. Burke comes out and marks it on his chest. He got the lead out to Burke in front of Caleb Sheehan and he takes the mark. He'll have to kick it 55 metres. Five metres in from the boundary line, though, so it'll be a tough kick from here for Jaden Burke. Very good player. Finds himself playing a lot of roles at Golden Square, but he's still kicked 30 goals this year for Golden Square. Usually a good set shot for goal. Tough conditions, though. Let's see if he goes with what Norm said before and starts it left and lets the breeze do its work. Start it right. Start it right. Said. That's yeah. exactly what he does. It didn't look pretty off the boot. But he gives the signal to the crowd as if to say, you know who I am. Jaden Burke kicks the goal and he gets the Golden Square Bulldogs in front for the first time this afternoon. The Dogs lead up against the Storm. And Golden Square are 4-4-28. Strathfield say 3-8-26. 15 minutes gone. In the second quarter, score sponsor JB re-stumping. Local football lives at Fresh Bendigo. Yes, as they did last Sunday against Eagle Hawk. They've done it against uh, Strath again today. They've got the ball onto this grandstand side and attacked the goals from the grandstand side. Back in the middle of will go. Up they go. Hosking won the tap on that occasion. And the Dogs will win it forward. Rover running the footy with Strosh. Turnover too high. Storm will get a free kick through Jones. Defensive side of the centre circle. Jones stands up, plays on, goes over the left with his handball to Clossy. Clossy runs. He puts it high. Inside forward 50. Under pressure now the Dogs. They need to kill this footy. Ground level. Heard a little toe poke. I don't think he meant it. To Shelton. Turnover again though. Gill for the Storm. Working it nicely. Little handball around the body. The kick will come. Storm will go inside forward 50. It came from Stevens, but it will be another turnover and the dogs will relieve the pressure. Yeah, Harry Kelly's kick, but he kicks it out of defence and it's going to be pressure straight back on because Allen gets it. Rather than bombing it back inside, he then chips across to Cooper Jones. Jones will then assess all options. He'll get on the left. And he'll send it inside forward 50, coming out, taking a strong intercept mark for Golden Square. It will be Harry Burke. He'll chip it across the ground, and they'll get out of trouble through Brody James. James, he'll just hold up the footy, deep in his defensive pocket. He'll go across the face of goal. 
finds Hurd, Hurd of the Dogs. Now plays on, he'll go round the body. He was looking for Freckleton or Reeves. Reeves at the back of the pack collected in his 50th game. Handball forward, Freckleton. Further handball forward. Now they'll move it. Receiving it was Kelly. Kelly now kicks it long, but it's a poor kick, and he's kicked it straight to the opposition, and Blanford is just racking up the possessions for the Storm. He yeah. goes across and finds Murphy. That's Kelly's uh, second inside 50 that's uh, gone to the opposition. Murphy's kicks a good kick down the line. He finds Cooper Jones, who's starting to get himself really involved in this game for Strath. So he has it. Centre wing position, pull side. He'll then get onto his left foot and send it up towards centre forward, but it just hurls up in the breeze and it finds a short pass into Tanner Rayner's hands. So Rayner for Golden Square will look to send it forward. He goes left. So they're playing kick to kick. On the left it was. Jones dropped a mark he ordinarily would have taken and he just smacks himself a little bit and says, I should have marked that. And on the true centre wing position, out of side, swimming pool side, we'll have a ball up. It's a two-point margin. The Storm now trail. 18 minutes have gone in this second term, in this first semi-final. A fresh area there by Sheen of the Storm. Ball goes inside forward, 50, however, for the Dogs. But to intercept there by Ernst, and Ernst off half-back will kick it long. Yeah, he runs his required 15 metres before sending it down. Oh, struggling, couldn't quite take the mark. In the end was Mole Quinney. That allowed the square to be able to pick up the ball through Holt. Holt sends it inside, forward 50. Burke couldn't quite take it. Spills to Stewart. Rosengreen's breaking. He can then go over the top to Burke. Or kick the goal himself. And he says, no, I'll do the ladder. Rosengreen's got two. And the Bulldogs are opening up a little bit of a lead here at the QEO now. Great option from Rosengreen. And he's a very talented player. 24 goals for him on the season and Golden Square now lead 5-4-34 to the Storm 3-8-26. 20 minutes played, second quarter. Score sponsor, Parsons Towings, Castle Main. Yes, unlucky for Strath Storm there. Uh, we had Caleb Burns did everything he needed to do, uh, creating the loose man in the back line, getting it up to Chambers who just couldn't hold on to a, a fingertipper and Golden Square then made the most of their chance. Entertaining game of footy here. It's open, it's fast. It's a lot better than yesterday's game, Norm. Uh, you weren't here, but Cam was. The ball is now shoveled out to uh, Clossy. It came from Harvey of the Storm. Now it goes to half forward. Swooping on the footy, there will be Gordon. Gordon will go goal. I reckon if he had his time again, he probably would have took it to the top of the square, but it goes wide and out of bounds. We'll have a ball in. 20 around from the goal, they're attacking the Storm. Storm trail 26 to 34. 20 minutes gone, second turn. Yes, it's hard to uh, attack to that uh, Barnard Street end. You've got to keep it to the uh, old South Bendigo club room side. Cleared out of there by the square. They'll send it into the middle of the ground. Bouncing around. Daniels couldn't take it. Murphy knocked it forward. Now they'll go backwards. Murphy gets involved again. Finds it out to Jones. Jones will then send it on the right. The kick will hold in the breeze and it will go right to the boundary line and a boundary throw in will be had on the poolside wing. Jeez, I'm thirsty. Wish I had me drink with me. Don't know where it went. 26 playing 34, the storm. <laughs> it was unopened. Umpire, you don't know what you'll catch off me. Yeah, you better be careful. The umpire threw that in and the ball, I reckon it moved 20 metres towards the city end. That's how strong the wind is. The ball will just work itself in the middle without any true possession. But uh, Eaton for the dogs, dived on it, gets a free kick. Smack bang in the middle of the queue. He sends it long. 60 metre ball. Jaden Burke, front position, hands on footy. He kicked the last goal. Clossy, turnover now. They need to be careful. Chambers, another turnover. Monty, he's got time he's got space and he slams it through for a minor score and that is an opportunity gone missing 35 playing 25 dogs lead 21 minutes gone second turn yes that was a, a big opportunity for Monty then uh, just didn't quite get enough on the kick Jones has got the kick in duties he chips and finds Colossi Colossi then runs his distance off the mark and handballs to Jones Jones then sends it down the line. And John Coe will float in front, take the intercept mark for the square in front of Charles. He quickly moves it on. Inside 450 he goes. Stewart's going to have to compete against two. Ratcliffe's got back to knock it towards the boundary line. And it goes over the boundary line for a boundary throw in. Right hand forward pocket here at the QEO. The Storm and the Square. It's a nine point lead to the Golden Square Bulldogs. There's Golden Square uh, making the most of the breeze in this quarter, unlike what uh, Strath did in the first quarter. 
This term sponsored by Rural and Outdoors in Castlemaine. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. It'll be the Storm. They'll win it defensively. Jai Chambers, short pass, kicks it out of bounds on the full. You're a gentleman, Cam. He went and got me another drink and felt guilty. Next time I'll ask for a coffee. As Dylan Hurd's got the free kick. It was a penalty free kick for out of bounds on the full. It was right in front of the coach's box. Umpire blows his whistle. Umpire Goodrich says, hurry it up. He does. He'll go inside forward 50. Monty couldn't pick up a ball that was ground level. It will be a stoppage. Murphy ties it all up. And 45 from home on a pretty tight angle will have a ball up. Golden Square in attack. They lead 35 to 26. I reckon Murphy's been good for the square. He has. Knocked down. Monty tried to find his way through the pack. Then he got tackled. And umpire Norton says we'll ball it up. Maybe could have been in a bit of trouble there if the umpire was not caught blindsided. Knocked down. Storm will try and work it out through Chambers. And while Daniels had to be a little bit careful not to carry through with that tackle, then it would have landed straight into the fence. They remonstrate a little bit, but there wasn't much in that. We'll get a throw in. Inside the right forward pocket, 50 out from goal. Boundary umpire will hurl the ball back into play. Golden Square would love another one here. And, well, it's a free kick yeah. off the ball. Silly play by Rick Mundy then. So, Monty, who's just threatened a couple of times to give away a few free kicks like that. And Riley Wilson will be the beneficiary of it for the Storm. He'll then chip a short pass. It's a dangerous kick in the breeze, putting Matt Harvey under a little bit of pressure. But Matt Harvey was able to mark it. And it should be 50 metre penalty against Macy Eaton, and it is. So Harvey will move the ball into the middle of the ground for the Storm. Just some silly free kicks being given away from the square here, Norm Jenkins. Yeah, they are, and they were two very silly free kicks. You got the ball in your forward 50, you want to keep it there. Harvey fans it wide by foot to Leicester. Leicester on the wing, just eating up the minutes here. He's got Harvey running for him. He gives it back to him by hand. Harvey and I go inside forward 50. Looking to get one here to the Barnard Street end. Oh, front and centre. Good roving by Sheehan. Goes goalward. And he hit the ball at pace and then slammed it into the post. So everything right except kicking a major. 27 playing 35. Storm trail. 24 and a half gone second term. Square don't waste any time. Rosengreen will receive the kick. He'll chip it further forward. Mark taken. Humphrey. Some appeals for 50 there on Humphrey. Who fell over as he's running backwards. He sends it down the line. Mark taken by Harrison Kelly. So Kelly's got it far wing for the square. He'll then wheel the kick up towards centre half forward and it carries over the back. So Ernst will intercept it for the Storm. He can go right back to Leicester if he wants to. Decides not to. Didn't even look in that direction. Should have gone back there. Well, he's just going to pump it down the wing. And I reckon that was the option to chip it back to Leicester and just run off some clock in this second quarter, which is now 25 minutes gone. Instead, he sends it to a contest down the line. It might work out for Hallinan. Hallinan to Jones. Jones then goes backwards to Blanford, so backwards to go forwards. Blanford just sends it back to where it came from, so not sure what the Storm are doing here. They're just constantly kicking it back to the congestion, and it'll be up against the boundary line for a ball up. Par side, true centre wing position on the pool side of the QEO, Strathfield say, and Golden Square in the first semi final at the QEO. They've had two opportunities to horseshoe it out, the Storm, and they've refused to do it, and that was the correct option, and now. Well, it's a long kick that goes to half forward out of bounds. So they're probably going to get away with eating some time, Must Storm. Must be but coached to just continually kick down this pool side yeah. because they're not even looking to go the other side of the ground here, Storm. Lester was putting his hands up, Norm. Did you see him? He was just... Yes, he was. He should have been given the football. I reckon it was the same last week for Strathco, John. They just refused to come down this grandstand side wing and they wanted to play that pool wing at all costs. If Blancs like us can pick it out, surely uh, the coaching staff can because it was the right option. Well, I reckon Gisborne took full advantage of that in the second half last week by memory. They did. Now the ball's across half forward. Left half forward. Golden Square in attack. Kicking to the city end. Sun starts to peak out now. Daniels wins it. Dogs, will they get another look at it? It's a long ball. Inside forward 50 now. Top of the square. They set themselves. Fall to the front of the pack. Clossy will mop up. Picks it up. Hurried kick under pressure. Hands on the footy. Reeves now. Still 70 from goal. They'll work it through the power of numbers. Getting one too high might have been Kelly. Umpire lets it go. Turnover and out through Shane. So Shane's kick, but it'll be coming straight back the other way for Golden Square. They'll send it inside forward 50. Helen and goes back. It's hard up against the boundary line. He kept it in play. It's going to be roved and a flying shot from Westcott. It's through for a minor score for Golden Square. So 27 playing 36. They haven't really taken full advantage of this breeze, though, I don't reckon, Golden Square in this quarter. 
Uh, it's interesting too. I've just been looking around the ground. One name that you haven't called this quarter very much has been uh, Shannon Geary. No. For the, for the storm. I wonder whether he's injured or just off having a break. On the other side, we haven't called John Coe that much either, so cancelling each other out. John Coe's definitely out there, but I haven't, haven't seen Shannon Geary out there. Yeah, I've, I've called him once or twice, I reckon. As Blanford sent it, 60 metre ball outside, defensive 50 to the outer side, stoppage, ball up, 27 playing 36. Storm trail, 27 and a half gone second term. It's an interesting pick up though, Norm Jenkin. Interesting to see if he does come out in the second half. Knocked down. Straight to the bottom of the pack for another ball up. True centre wing. Pull side. About 60 out from goal. Are the dogs. Storm might be relatively happy too, Norm, with uh, just being able to maintain it and not letting uh, the Golden Square dogs get away with it. Free kick, Leicester. Handball's off. They send the kick down the pull side wing. Again, the Storm. Josh couldn't take it. Spills out to Sheehan. Sheen will then pump it towards centre half forward. Knock forward cleverly by Gordon. Couldn't quite get it back. Well read by Shelton to the dogs. He'll send it down the wing. And it's all being played on that pull side wing. Daniel's got the nice bounce and he handballed over the top. They'll work it forward here. Lockie Humphrey, handball forward. Got it off, then tried to go back to Humphrey. Just overcooked the handball a little bit. They've kept it alive though, the square. They'll then send it towards the top of the goal square. No mark to Ernst, but he was taken front on. And I'm not sure the square supporters in front of us overly agreed, but it'll be a free kick to Caleb Ernst on the last line of defence. And like I think storm. Strath might be reading it the same way as us, that it's easy to kick goals from the uh, grandstand side, so keep the ball on the pool side as much as you can. So Caleb Ernst didn't even look this direction then, and he just pumped it long straight that pool side. And not relying at all other than sending it down that wing, and I'm not sure that's the right play at the moment, John. You've got to try something a little bit different, surely. No, uh, I think you're right, but I just mentioned to Norm then, um, I think the Storm, uh, they'll be going into the half-time relatively happy because Golden Square, they didn't really, they had patches, but they didn't really make the most of it, I don't think, when they were kicking for goal to this to this city end, which also, at times, it's as strong as a four-goal uh, win, but... Um, probably averages between two and four at the moment so it'll be an interesting three quarter the third quarter the premiership quarter whether uh golden square are uh, able to hold on the storm need to kick probably at least well they need to kick at least three goals to get in front and then you'd like them to be three or four goals in front at three quarter time so the storm didn't kick any goals in that quarter they only kicked two behinds norm jenkin where golden square kicked four goals three as opposed to three goals seven in the first quarter for strath so an extra goal in the quarter compared to what we saw in the first quarter. So we're probably basing on that. It is a good three or four goal breeze. Yes, and uh, as I said to you, uh, goals to the uh, Barnard Street end are going to be worth gold today. And uh, we've only seen one up there, and uh, that was to uh, Golden Square, and that's more or less what they lead by. So that is half time here at the QEO. It is finals footy, the final Sunday of 2024. For the prelim final next week where the winner of this game will go on to take on Sandhurst. It is all still to be determined who will win and who Sandhurst will play next week. The second half still to come. Cam Power, John Hunter and Norm Jenkin where local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. The finals are now upon us. Let's have a look at the top five from the first week. Number one, we kick it off. Thomas Timer here from Golden Square. Beautiful work, just using his pace. Got over the back, unloaded from 50. Got tackled at the same time as well and bounces it through. Number two, Jordan Rosengren here from Golden Square. Just a lovely mark, just showing his strength. Got to the front of the back and took a big grab. Number three here, Shane Clough from Gisborne. This is a class finish outside of the boot from the boundary. Oh, yeah. It's Jack O'Shaughnessy here from Eagle Hawk. Pack your bags, get ready to take flight. This is an absolute hanger. Look at him go on the second grab as well. Secured it. Number 
Number five is Dylan Johnson here from Gisborne. He had five goals this afternoon. This is probably his best one. Plenty of pace to burn. Right on 50. Loads. Oh, yeah. Thank you. 
and then probably three or four goals. So we're looking at a six or seven goal, I think, an ambition by the Storm if they're to win this cutthroat first semi-final here on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, and that was what they were able to do last uh, last weekend. If you remember last Saturday, they had a, uh, a six-goal uh, third quarter to get themselves back in the contest, but uh, unfortunately for them, it was Gisborne that uh, got four goals uh, against the Breeze uh, in the third quarter. So Strath... I believe they've got to attack. They've got to bite the bullet and attack through the uh, grandstand side wing to give them a better chance of uh, putting a score on the board. We saw Golden Square do it to good effect that quarter. Three of their four goals came from this grandstand side. For uh, Golden Square, they've got to keep the ball on the pool side when they uh, when they exit uh, their back 50 and uh, keep uh, Storm over on that sto- uh, pool side and... Uh, That'll uh, negate uh, Storm's chance of scoring. Yeah, and uh, the better players, the Golden Square, I thought... Um, I was doing the Golden Square, yep, wasn't I? You, yep. you, were doing, uh, you were doing the Storm. But um, in his 50th game, I thought Terence Reeves did have some uh, important possessions. He won some pretty hard ball. But um, players like, and I mentioned them at quarter time, Jack Stewart and Sampson came into the game. I thought Kelly did pretty well at, at times. Monty started to get his uh, hands on the footy at his, as did Tom Tomer. He, he kicked a ripping goal. Lachlan Humphrey, well, he had le- uh, lead poisoning, leather poisoning at quarter time, but he probably backed off a little bit. But uh, from a to- uh, Storm perspective, who did you see as the better players? Well, I, I thought Wilson for the start of that uh, second quarter continued on as he had done in the first quarter. Gill, once again, he was in and under and got plenty of the ball and uh, he's become an elite midfielder. Cooper Jones came into it uh, during that second quarter but died out near the end of the quarter. Uh, Darcy Mulquinney uh, got a bit of the football as did Daniel Clossy and and down back uh, they were under pressure right through that quarter and Patrick Blandfield and Kayla Burns uh, did a great job for uh, the Storm. Now in the A grade uh, netball that's just underway that just started only a few minutes ago so Kangaroo flat trail one goal to Eagle Hall three so we'll keep our on that sto- uh, that score. So the Storm 3927 here at the QER. It's half time if you've just joined us to 5636 to, to Golden Square. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo and I can't believe the conditions they've just improved out of sight. Uh, just just goes to show you, Norm, that you, you shouldn't win the toss. Not that they did on this occasion, but you just should play to the conditions because it looks like if this keeps up we might have some decent conditions compared to that uh, first half so it'll be interesting to see sometime sides they don't know what's going on in course until they come out who adjusts as, who adjusts better that's right and as we saw last week storm were able to adjust uh, in that third quarter uh, as i said uh, before they put six goals on the board but uh, to their credit gisborne did the same the other end they put four goals on the board and uh, so storm was still out of the contest but uh, as I said, I believe that the Storm coach, they've got to bite the bullet. They've got to get the ball onto this grandstand side wing, get the ball into their forward 50 quick and give uh, everybody down there an opportunity to kick goals. Wilson, early on, got plenty of the football and, and made the most of it uh, with his uh, one shot on goal, as did Daniel Clossy, uh, whilst Caleb Sheehan, uh, he had uh, three shots on goal during that first half and kicked one goal too. We need more down forward from the likes of Boat Stevens, who uh, dropped out of it that quarter. Malik Gordon, um, you know, he's the sort of player that should be able to put his stamp on this game and... Uh, He's got to find space. Uh, he's got to get them to kick the ball to his advantage. And it, it just didn't happen through that first half of football. But that was to Golden Square's credit. They were able in the first quarter to get players back behind the ball and then run the ball out of defence. And I like that right throughout the first half, the way both sides were prepared to run and gun and, and get the handball, get the ball moving on all occasions. Yes, it gave the opposition a chance for... Uh, for a turnover, but most of the time both clubs rubble to handle the ball well 
through congestion. Now, it was Geordie Roden, uh, Rosengren. I, I didn't mention him as one of the better players, but he certainly was up forward. I like the fact that um, he kicked two goals, and they were goals that were... He, he found himself in space. He was a, a little way out from goal, but he settled under pressure. And you could tell he wanted that moment here this afternoon. So he could be an important factor in this uh, second half of the Dogs. Well, as we saw last week, uh, once again, finals football brought the best out of him uh, in that uh, second half last week for Golden Square up against Eagle Hawk. He was certainly uh, one of the catalysts to uh, get Golden Square into today's first semi-final. And... Just about to get things underway here. We're not far away from the start of the second half. Both sides have come together. They're out. They're both in their huddles. And you've been out and about. Cam Powers just joined us again. You've been down in the rooms. And a uh, good feeling down in the rooms and amongst the crowd, Cam? Yeah, it's quite a big crowd, actually. I didn't realise how big the crowd actually was until you look out onto this... Uh where those old change or those old social rooms used to be that you keep mentioning it's actually pretty deep out there so a good crowd the weather's turned sunny so the barbecue is certainly flowing out there and the vibes in the golden square rooms i think they'd be relatively happy but i also think the storm would be pretty happy as well it's a massive third quarter and it's all about momentum in modern footy and who takes it in this third quarter yeah storm uh, they've had one more scoring shot so far to golden square and uh, they find themselves nine points down They've got to straighten up in front of goal during this third quarter, put the score on the board and put the scoreboard pressure on Golden Square for the last turn. Well, the loser will be eliminated today, so it'll be either the Storm or Golden Square will progress next week to the preliminary final. They will play Sandhurst. And in the MCD for now, we've got a score update. Trentham 3-5-23 to Lexton 2-3-15, where local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. And then the winner, of course, next week of that game, the Sandhurst game versus the winner of this game, they'll go on to the grand final the following week to play against Gisborne. Just about to get things underway in this second half. One team will be eliminated. The Storm, they trail at the moment. They're 3-9-27 to Golden Square 5 636 where local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo for the second half. Here's Cam Power. Yes, a tale of two weathers here at the QEO and the storm. They're kicking with what was the breeze in the first half, but it looks to have slightly died down. In the middle we go. Gill forces the ball up for the storm. Hosking won it down. Klossy then tried to track after it. Going through for the storm there will be Chambers. He'll eventually get it off. Wilson will all merge with it inside forward 50. He goes goalwards and he knew straight away he pulled it to the left. So a minor score to Riley Wilson. And it is 3-10 now, Stratfield say. So not good kicking at goal. Golden Square 5-6. It is an eight-point lead to the Stratfield say storm. Troll will bring the kick back into play. Score sponsor uh, is... Parsons towing to Castle Rain. Yes, if Wilson had been online with a carbon copy of the first quarter start. Trifle played on from fullback for uh, Golden Square. He brings it broadcast side now. Strosh was the target. Little give by hand was ineffective to Stewart. Causes a stoppage. In 70 metres from goal, but the Storm are attacking. We'll have a ball up. 28 playing 36. Storm, they've got the wind even though it's died down a little in this third term, the premiership term. Eaton for Golden Square. Poor handball. He was good enough to back it up. Gives it to space. He listened for the voice and found it. And James kiss, kicks it corridor. And he does, but it's not a great kick. It bounces and it favours Bode Stevens, who goes backwards to Ernst. Ernst will then send it down the direction. It just carried over Brody James's head and sat up in the breeze nicely for Jai Chambers. So Chambers marks it. He'll then look to go inside forward 50 for the Storm. Sends it on a right. Jones is going to get a good look at it, but he's caught behind Strosh. Couldn't take the mark. Spills out the back to Sheehan. Sheehan handballs to Matt Harvey. Matt Harvey just fumbled, but he'll wheel back around around his body on the left and snap it through for a minor score. And if the Storm are to win this game, they need Matt Harvey to really fire in this second half inside forward 50. Not a good start for him. 3-11 playing 5-6. Trouble kicked it down the line. It was an aggressive kick. It was effective and finds James. He'll go spread it wide now looking for Burke. In fact, it was Monty, not James. As Burke goes over the boundary line and will have a ball in. Cross half forward. Storm, they're in attack. They need to hit the scoreboard aggressively. Only two and a half minutes gone in this third term. Umpire will throw it in. Darkening skies now. 
Umpire, big throw. Hosking wins the tap for the Storm. Clossy grabs the footy, then handballs it to nobody in particular. Then Golden Square jump on top of it. Clossy over the top of him. And 70 metres from home. Golden Square in attack will have a ball up by John Norton. 29 playing 36, Storm trail. Knocked forward by Daniels. Chambers went without the footy. Spills out to James, who's in a one-on-one -on -one with Shan. Clossy went back, beat a couple, then handballed the ball backwards. Merging with the footy will be Stevens. He'll then send it up towards centre half forward. It just carried out the back. Couldn't quite take the mark. Three kicks paid to Mal Quinney. Was just dealt with after he almost took the mark. So Mal Quinney, 55 out from goal, almost directly in front for the Storm. He's backing himself, but it'll take a good kick from here, Norm. It would be, but uh, once again, got to look at that right-hand goal post and just let the wind do the work for him. So Riley Mulquinney from 50 metres out, directly in front. He comes in, and, well, the distance is not going to be a worry there. It just swings to the left for a minor score. And it seems to be the story of the day. The Storm have been very inaccurate. They're three goals, 12. Golden Square, five goals, six. So they've had a few extra shots on goal. Score sponsor... Bendigo City Framers, local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. Trollful short pass. Goes to Tomer. First time I've done it for uh, this weekend too, Cam. As the ball goes to the outside wing by the Dogs. Stoppage out of side. We'll have another ball up. <laughs> Predominantly inside forward 50, Norm. A lot of stoppages going on there now for the Storm. Yeah, there is, but they, they can't, they're not making the most of their opportunities. Hosking wins the tap. Taps it straight into the path of an opposition Golden Square player. Eaton getting involved, Clossy as well. Turnover after turnover, the Storm will emerge now. Running through with Stevens. He got the old one, two to Chambers. Now it's a horrible ball inside forward 50. Good pick up by Ernst. Gives it by hand to Malik Gordon. Goal and bangs it through. Just as we said it, Norm, they slam. He was standing there, kicking. Sends it into the pocket. Hard lead coming. Goes out of bounds. That was an interesting decision from Tommy Grosh. Only clever punch in the path of Harvey, who goes goal and it kicked a goal. Unbelievable bit of play. Awareness all round there from the Storm players who now. Take the lead. It will be the Storm 5-4-42. Golden Square. to start this.
6642. Yeah, Ratcliffe's now come off for the storm and uh, Hoskins gone back on to resume his, uh, his job in the ruck. Uh, they've done very well the start of this quarter with Hoskin off the ground. So let's see what can happen with uh, a dominant ruckman back there. Oh, massive moments in this third quarter.
themselves a 21-point lead going into the final stanza of the first semi-final for 2024. Well, will 21 points be enough for the Stratfield, say, Storm? As the sun starts to peak its eye back out again, there's a couple of rainbows in the background, but it is a massive final quarter to come. It is cutthroat footy. It is the first semi-final. Stratfield, say, in Golden Square. The loser goes home. The winner gets another chance at Sandhurst next week for a spot in the grand final. The final quarter to come. Do not go anywhere. It's going to be a beauty. Local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. The finals are now upon us. Let's have a look at the top five from the first week. Number one, we kick it off. Thomas Tomer here from Golden Square. Beautiful work, just using his pace. Got over the back, unloaded from 50. He got tackled at the same time as well and bounces it through. Number two, Jordan Rosengren here from Golden Square. Just a lovely mark, just showing his strength. Got to the front of the back and took a big grab. Number three here, Shane Clough from Gisborne. This is a class finish outside of the boot from the boundary. Oh, yeah. It's Jack O'Shaughnessy here from Eagle Hawk. Pack your bags, get ready to take flight. This is an absolute hanger. Look at him go on the second grab as well. Secured it. Number five is Dylan Johnson here from Gisborne. He had five goals this afternoon. This is probably his best one. Plenty of pace to burn right on 50. <laughs> Loads. Oh, yeah. Well, it is the sun poking its eyes out again here at the QEO in the final quarter between Stratfield Say and Golden Square. It is shaping up to be an absolute beauty. 9-15-69 Stratfield Say, 7-6-48 Golden Square. Golden Square are kicking with a slight breeze in this last quarter, which is where most of the scoring has been kicked. And in the MCD final at three-quarter time, Trentham 7-8-50 lead. Lexton 2-3-15. The goal kickers in this game, Jordan Rosengreen has three for Golden Square. Jack Stewart, two. Tom Toma and Jaden Burke, one apiece. While for the Storm, Matt Harvey kicked two in that last quarter, as did Lockie Gill, Riley Wilson, Shannon Geary, Daniel Clossy and Caleb Sheehan, all with singles. Having a look at the better players for the Stratford State Storm. They lead the 
lead the game by 21 points. Who do you like in the storm side of things, Norm G? Well, Matt Harvey, yeah, that quarter had four shots at goal, two goals, two went into the midfield and uh, and had a big say in uh, how the uh, how the the quarter turned around for Strathstorm. Also, like Wilson and Gill uh, on ball, getting plenty of plenty of ball. Hoskin in the ruck, uh, he's been the dominant ruckman today. He's certainly taken both. Uh, Daniels and, and Rayner to the cleaners in, in the way he's gone about it. I like the way they used Caleb Ernst to start that third quarter. They went down back and they let him drift forward whenever he wanted to drift forward. He got on the end of, uh, of two, wasn't able to kick a goal, uh, put one out on the full, but uh, made the most of his other opportunity. And, and young Riley Mulquinney, I thought that uh, he did well uh, in that third quarter too. So the important names we talk about for Golden Square, starting to get their hands on the footy cam. Uh, Ricky Monty, I thought, uh, at times had some important touches. Trelfel, I've liked his work off halfback. He's getting a lot of his kicks in that defensive zone, but uh, to the general part of it, he seems pretty reliable. Tom Toma also getting some important touches down back. So it'll be interesting if they can make the most of it by kicking with the wind in this game. Kangaroo Flat have got the A-grade netball under control. They lead Eagle Hawk. Kangaroo Flat 36 playing Eagle Hawk 22. Yes, this uh, last quarter is going to be uh, crucial for, for both sides. Uh, Strathstorm must keep uh, Golden Square on the swimming pool side. For mine, Golden Square have got to be able to uh, take risks, get the ball on the grandstand side and attack from the grandstand side to the open face of goal. Well this is it it's come down to the last quarter here in this cutthroat first semi-final on your Sunday afternoon at the QEO the Storm, they lead 9-15-69 Golden Square 7-6-48 but Golden Square are kicking with a 3 or 4 goal win. Here for all the action, local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo, here's Camp Hour Inside the middle Daniels won the tap down. Klossy got it for the Storm. Handballed off, it was partially smothered, but it still fell to Bode Stevens. The big names in the middle. Stevens inside, Riley Wilson charges out. He marks on his chest, quickly wheels around onto his right foot, goes in the direction of Charles. It just knocked away from him by John Coe. And I reckon that Riley Wilson probably could have gone back and taken his 30 and had a shot for goal, Norm. Yeah, so I think he was well within distance, or if not, he would have put it in uh, in the teeth of goal in the goal square. Umpire will throw it in. It's high, it's long, it moves in the breeze. Front of the pack, Shelton will mop up. Now for the dogs, he puts it beyond 50. He'll go swimming poolside, whistle on play, free kick. It'll be the storm. Can they mount a goal against the wind? It'll be very, very important for them as it'll go with Hosking. Hosking, handball now to Clossy. Clossy of the Storm, he goes into the pocket. Big fist, Golden Square need to be careful here. It's a little handball to the top of the square. It's ineffective, John Coe, he gives it to Toma and Toma will kick it long into the middle of the QEO. Lands in the middle of the ground. It's even numbers at the drop of the ball. Rosengren come out, picked it up, tackled straight away by Leicester. An interesting, Strath have made the move to put Kayla Ernst on uh, Rosengren for this last quarter. So Leicester trickles back into the defence as well, which allows Hosking to go up, win the tap down. Straight to ground level for a repeat ball up. Bodie James in there against Chambers. Chambers had some moments in that third quarter. Knocked down for the Storm. Handball Sampson. Thomas' kick was smothered. It was spills out Murphy, and he gets caught high to Shannon Murphy. So he'll receive the free kick for Strath. And he's almost in the middle of the QEO. He'll clear it down the poolside wing. They're doing all the attacking here, Storm, albeit to the Barnard Street. And they are against the wind. So valuable time ticking away here. Sheehan has got the footy. And a great diving mark by Sheehan. Then he took it like a slips catch out in front. Short pass forward, 15 metres. Gives it there to Stevens. Stevens inside forward 50. Wilson with his target. Need to be careful, Malik Gordon. Handballs it to Murphy. Murphy will go to the top of the square. 10 metres out, to pretty much directly in front. Dylan Hurd will kill it and put it through for a minor score. So 70 playing 48 now. Storm lead, two and a half gone. Final term, local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. One kick in and Freckleton couldn't hold it on the far side. It comes off his hands. He just probably needed to mark that one, I reckon, uncontested. Norm. 
Yes, that Golden Square, I'm just noticing they've got to get people into their forward line. It's all right to have them round the ball, but you need them in the forward line. They're outnumbered down here at present. So it'll be thrown in. Daniel's got to the front, knocked it forward. Sampson's come into the game this quarter. He was tackled straight away. So Shane got it for the storm. Handballed to Matt Harvey. Matt Harvey gives it over the top to Stevens, who's taken in the tackle by Toma, and he's going to be pinned holding the ball. Good tackling pressure from the Dogs. And Tom Toma receives a free kick centre wing position. Pull side. So look to come in board for Golden Square. Not a lot doing further forward of the ball for him. Right about not being a lot of options in front. Toma has to then take his 15 metres before sending it inside forward 50. And a good defensive mark. Standing in the hole for Strathfield State was young Blanford. Freckleton was coming out hard at it. But Blanford was there and he takes the intercept mark for the storm. So Blanford plays on from his defensive zone. Sends it out of side. Swimming pool side, turnover. Strosh, he turns it over. Who will win it out of the middle here? Charles doing well, battling for the storm. So is Clossy. Good, strong tackling there by Toma of the Dogs. We'll have another stoppage. Ball up, out of side, but valuable seconds ticking away here, Norm. It is. Stop, start, suiting Strath Storm at this stage. It'll get to the stage, albeit they have a pretty strong wind here, Golden Square. It'll come to the stage where it will be too much. A kick that goes up the chimney. No advantage to either side. Comes off hands. Strosh gives it to the boundary umpire and swimming pool side, true centre wing position. Ball in. 70 playing 48. Storm looks like, feels like they've almost got this one under control. A little bit too early to go for that one, I reckon, John. I said nearly. I said nearly, Cam. Up, down. Square work it forward. Trollful. Into the middle of the ground. Presenting out, taking the lead will be Stewart. Stewart will then quickly send it inside. 450 looking for Burke. Ratcliffe come from behind, knocked it forward into the hands of Cooper Jones, who read it well. Jones has just set this one, and he just bangs it to the centre wing. And do I need yes, to say it? It's yes, been paid. It Hallelujah. I know Don Moran will be listening. There's been an insufficient intent kick called in the Bendigo Footy League. I've been calling for it all year, Johnny. I've seen a few, I know if Don Hunt, Johnny, Donnie Moran was here, he would be laughing his head off. Square will bring the ball back in. They'll send it inside, forward 50. No mark. Spills to Stewart. Stewart goes goalwards. Not quite got the distance and able to be punched through by Taylor Burns for a minor score. 70 playing 49 in favour of the Storm. Big crowd in attendance and they're starting to get into this game as well. Five minutes gone in the final quarter. Score sponsor passes to his Castle Main. There's a bit going on, is there? Not sure what the crowd's uh, getting involved about. Jones will play on for the Storm well, for fullback. Square behind the goal down there, so I think they're just getting into Cooper Jones for the kick in. Sends it beyond 50. It come off hand, so we'll have a ball on, ball in. So Golden Square still in attack. I think it's that, the whole under-18s and reserves teams are sitting behind the goal for Golden Square. That there. wind, I don't know if it's good news for Golden Square, but it seems to have backed off for the moment. Sun shining here at the QEO. Oh, he danced. He did a blind turn. Monty, now he goes inside forward fifth. But Radcliffe against Burke. He had some quality opposition. Takes a, a mark. Spreads it wide short to Jones. Jones on the left. Oh, good mark it was by Chambers of the Storm. He was under pressure. Flew and athletic. He goes aggressive. Corridor, too aggressive. Has he turned it over? Toma now. He's got a chance. Clossy did well. Dispossessed. Harvey threw his head back trying to get a free kick. Won't be sucked in the umpire. It'll be a stoppage. Halfway between the wing and right half forward. Golden Square and attack kick into the city end. Looks like nerves starting to creep into this game here. Daniels wins it down. Eaton picked it up. And Eaton's got a shrug off the tackle of Chambers. He does. Goes backwards. And then he's caught in the tackle. Just got it away in time. Reeves to Kelly. Kelly, middle of the ground. Stewart has to trap it. Couldn't quite do so. So Blanford will receive for the storm. He'll send it out in the direction of Charles. Charles gets the bounce. Then he's able to shrug the tackle. Handball's off to Gordon. Gordon back over the top to Charles. Back to Gordon. Gordon couldn't quite find a way through the Kelly tackle. Handball to Wilson. The opposite three down there for Square. Burke, he'll clear it out of there. It'll come to John Coe, and John Coe, ever so reliable, gets the ball to James. James handballs onwards to Reeves. Reeves, poor kick to Ratcliffe. Golden Square need to get on their bike pretty soon if they're going to win this game. We are waiting for it to happen. It's just not happening at the moment. Ratcliffe laterally short inboard. Harvey receives. Hold on to the footy here. Valuable seconds. It's still ticking by. Harvey will go to the wing. 
His target was Charles. It'll be a turnover. Dogs with another chance. Good, strong tackling storm. Pinged, and they'll get a free kick. It's with Wilson. Stands up, plays on. One bounce, two bounces. He'll run to 50, hard up against the boundary line. Mongrel ball inside forward 50. Doesn't give his forwards any chance. Gordon, is he good enough to pick it up? He is. He goes around the body. Goal, tumbling, bouncing ball for a minor score. Boy, oh boy, excitement plus. 9.17 Storm, 71 Golden Square, 7.749. Time is running out at the eight and a half minute mark of this cutthroat first semi final. Square bring the ball back into play. Chip the short pass. And they've got it up to the paint of 50. Down the line they'll go. Taken away. One bounce, two bounces for the dogs. They'll work it up through James. And then it's just able to be thumped away by Caleb Ernst who gets a nice pat on the back by Paddy Blanford. So right in front of our broadcast position here. Sun is shining here at the QEO. It's been a funny old day in terms of weather here. Sun shining, rain coming down, wind howling. We've had it all. Throw in was extremely short. Daniels was a little bit more athletic than Hosking. Marked it on his chest, handled the reads, but the umpire's going to have another crack at this boundary throw in. 71 playing 49. Nine minutes gone in the last quarter. We're just waiting for Golden Square to do something, as you called before, Johnny. Still plenty of time left in the contest. This is a better throw in. Call it a dead heat. Reeves was clean. Handball to Humphrey. Humphrey high ball inside forward 50. He needs someone to fly. And that man will be Cooper Jones, who's doing it at both ends of the ground. Intercept mark. A couple of square players collided with each other. Jones clears it out. And Leicester will mark for Golden Square. And then after Stratford say, underneath the scoreboard, Ben Leicester. Which is his defensive zone. I'm almost about to call this, Norm. I've just got this feel about it. As they need to get on their bike here. The kick from Leicester held up in the wind. The half back. Here's their chance here, Golden Square. Oh, it's a good strong tackle from beyond 50. They might get a free kick. It was Holt that uh, got tackled. But uh, still with Golden Square. James, he received a mark. He's on the wing for Golden Square. Short pass forward. Poor kick. Kicked it straight to Lockie Gill. Causes a turnover, and the Storm have possession on right half back, and just playing some smart footy and slowing it down. Camp. That's exactly what Gill does. He chips the short pass, finds a teammate, taking the mark. Matt Harvey. So Matt Harvey for Strass. He's just content to slow it down. And why wouldn't you if you're Strass? Probably too early to go the full shutdown mode. But if they can waste a little bit of time here and there, they'll certainly do so. Monty gets it in the middle of the ground for the square. Further forward to Stewart. Stewart's dead smack in the middle. He's been called to go. Goes with a short pass, which finds its way into the hands of a teammate, Brody James. James inside 450. Didn't look, and that's, well, it's a free kick. Has to be a free kick. Macy Eaton came through and collected Ben Lester well and truly after he would have tried to take the mark. Lester handballs off to Harvey. Harvey chips it to Jones. And they'll start the process again, John Hunter. Deep in the back zone, but they look confident the way they're moving the footy, the storm. But conversely, the other way, Golden Square are just bombing it long inside forward 50, and they're not making the most of this win. Hosking, big punch for Storm, still across half forward. It will be a stoppage in the netball. It will be Kangaroo flat. They will win that game, you would think. 50 to 26 against Eagle Hawk in the A grade netball. Yes, look, Strath, they're playing an excellent last quarter of football against the wind. They're uh, holding the ball up at every opportunity and uh, and just uh, flicking it around between teammates to keep control of the football. It's the way they love to play the game and they're doing it to perfection in this last quarter. Hosking down the line. Wilson tried to juggle the mark. He kept it alive, handled to Charles. Charles will then send it inside forward 50 for the Storm. Shelton will get the bounce he's after. He receives. Chips the pass to Rosengren. Rosengren to Harry Kelly. Kelly through the middle of the ground, goes further forward and finds Macy Eaton. Eaton then stepped himself straight into Daniel Clossy. He did not see him. And Daniel Clossy could not believe his luck when Macy Eaton turned around and Clossy just went, gotcha. Holding the ball and Strath will send it inside forward 50. Clossy. Stands in the middle of the QEO. Sun is beaming here now at the QEO. Changing seasons every couple of minutes, it feels like, at the QEO here in Bendigo. He goes inside, 450, storm mark! Flew high, flew early. It is Jack Charles 
just out of nowhere and he'll be on a pretty tight angle but distance won't be a problem only 20 25 meters norm yes and it'll be interesting they haven't been able to hit the uh hit the center of the target up there in that uh to the barnard street end all day they have a chance now uh 13 minutes into this last quarter to kick their first goal at the barnard street end and you would almost say that would kill the game it will at the very least be the first nail in the coffin we come down to moments in cutthroat finals it's the final quarter. He hops, he steps, he's a bit nervous, and he has kicked a goal! The storm against the flow here at the QEO in this cutthroat semi extend the lead, and is it enough now? 10-17-77 to Golden Square, 7-7-49. Scoreboard sponsor, Parsons Towing in Castlemone, local lift footy lives at Fresh Bendigo and we're about halfway through this final term Norm Yes and it means now Golden Square need to uh, kick five goals they need to find five goals in the last uh, 15 minutes of this game to win. So we'll ball it up Reeves will run straight into the middle off the forward 50 for the square. Doesn't go that way though. Handball out Eaton. Got it off to Daniels sidestepping then sending it inside forward 50. Burks at a one on one with Ratcliffe Coming through, Freckleton just dived it. Spills out the back for Stewart. Stewart can dribble it towards goal. Great tackle by Jones. Should have been holding the ball. Not rewarded. It comes out. Strosh. Blanford just soccers it off the ground. And it's going to go towards the boundary line. Boundary throw in. And the square fans behind the goals are going bonkers. <laughs> Where was the insufficient there calling? You well, couldn't gonna, pay that you're one. You're not going to get that paid, little alone in this league. Even I wouldn't have gone on a rant about that one, John Hunter. No. Going inside for 50, right hand forward pocket. Stormer in control, 15 minutes final turn. Will they get another chance here? Humphrey, he wins it. The Dogs, Reeves, he's got time, he's got space. He didn't give it enough elevation. But at the goal face, Freckle had picked it up. Jones fell over for the Storm. And they're just still alive in this, the Golden Square Dogs. Yes, there's still plenty of time if Golden Square are good enough. That's the first of five goals they need. It's only taken a minute and a half to get that one. Another two or three goals in the next six minutes and the uh, game's certainly back on again. 10-17-77 the Storm. 8 7 Golden Square. 16 minutes gone. Final term. Uh, scoreboard sponsor, Don Smallwood Goods. Is Don is good? I'm getting excited, Cameron. Well, you know, momentum in modern footy is something, and they're square. If they can get momentum, who knows? Into the middle we go. One down easily for the square by Daniels. To Toma inside. Jaden Burke coming, charging out. Ratcliffe got him. Terry Reeves. He was going to run into an open goal, but he thought no. Free kick was paid to Burke. I reckon Reeves would have kicked it. He should it have anyway. kicked it. I reckon he would have kicked he it. He should have. He had time. He had space. He, he was out. He went to the top of the goal square and nearly slammed that one through. But he oh. just kind of thought, I'll let Jaden Burke do the work, Norm Jenkin. Yes. Uh, second guessed himself as to whether he could. Any normal footballer that thought he kicked that goal would have continued on and kicked it. Jaden Burke. Interesting. When he goes to these marks, he goes one-handed and leaves the other one back. And that's what Ratcliffe... Cliff grabbed hold of. I reckon in these situations you've got to kick that and not right to a set shot. But Burke, 25 out directly in front, oh and that no. is exactly why, because he has shanked it to the left. And well, Reeves will be kicking himself. Big moment. 56 plays, 77. 21 points, 17 gone in the final term. The yeah, Stress Storm can't relax now. They've got to uh, they've got to keep their pressure up, they've got to keep concentrating on what they're doing, or they could lose it. Reeves, he's a beautiful kick of the footy and you just sensed he had time and space and he just set himself. He's a beautiful left footer. But let's get back to the uh, time in front of us now. Storm have won it from the kick in from fullback. Hurried kick there from Malik Gordon to the wing. The ball keeps continuing on to Charles. It will be a turnover. In fact, it will be a whistle on play. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Hard up against the boundary line, the ball is. In fact, it's more forward now for the Storm than not. Across half forward, in fact... Swimming poolside, Storm in attack, 77 playing, 56, Storm lead, 17 and a half gone, final turn. Time well and truly now against Golden Square, Storm will work it forward, comes out, Rosengren picked up the ball, he sent it down towards an half forward, good diving mark for the Storm by Dan Clossy, who looks like he's playing on Monty. And done a very good job, especially in this second half. Absolutely has done, Dan Clossy will then send a ball on his right foot, he skew-whiffed it a little bit. 
big fly came not taken. That spills to ground. That was Ernst that got up. A lot of players around this one doing herds on top of that one. So we'll call it a herd of dogs around this. Even though it's meant to be a pack of dogs. <laughs> 21 point lead to the Strathfield say Storm 18 gone in the final quarter. He thinks he says something smart. He's got this big stupid look on his face whenever he does that. He looks over with a big Cheshire eye cat grin. Dogs here. Is it another chance? Burt takes a mark. 60 out. He'll wheel and go. He'll look for Freckleton. He has to hit it hard. But Jones used his body. Gave a little yep. nudge. It was Perfect. fair. It was effective. Jones spreads it wide on the left now. Good kick. Spots up Chambers, who's been pretty good. 15 metres in from the boundary line. Broadcast side. Left half back. Looks to go down the line. He does. Short pass. Oh, it's a good hit. He hits up Jackson Lay. And Storm showing composure now in these guys. Well, still a little bit of time to go there, Cam. Still enough time if they're good enough, but I'm just not sure they are. They haven't managed to kick with the wind this quarter. Free kick Storm at the top of the 50. will go to Charles, who's going to say, I'm going to have to shot. It's more of a ploy to take his 30, and I wouldn't be surprised if he takes his 30 and then tries to hit up the top of the goal square here, Norm. Well, he should try and hit up the top of the goal square or, or go towards the boundary line, get the ball out of bounds and get another throw in. Or kick the goal. If he thinks he's good enough, Zach Charles. Surely not. He's not already got one. 55 metres out on the right. He has a go. Good. He's kicked it right to the line. It's going to be touched on the line. Oh, gee, it wasn't a bad effort at all. 78, 56, 22 point margin. Just ticked into the 20th minute of this final quarter. Square have got to throw caution to the wind. They have to be aggressive. You may as well go down fighting and lose it by eight goals and try to win it aggressively. That's what they've got to do now. It's a cutthroat final. Approaching time on. But Storm through Hallinan will go inside forward 50. Contest forms. Wilson hits the pack hard for the Storm. Manages to get it on the boot. Shelton needs to show composure. He does. Puts it boundary line side. And 20 metres around from goal that the Storm are attacking. We'll have a ball in. Storm 78. Golden Square 56, 20 minutes ticked over, last term, here at the QEO in this cutthroat first semi-final. Full-time score in the MCD, if now Trentham, Lexton did not score in the second half, 3-5-23 to Trentham, 15-11, 101. In back here at the QEO, a lot of contests around the ball. Dylan Hurd will pick up the ball and handball off to Rosengren. Rosengren to Toma, now they can send it down the wing, pull side wing. It's a high ball down the line, just gets over the back. Sampson tried to paddle it forward. Burke will get a free kick. He had his jumper held. Umpire was not not losing that one. So free kick to Jaden Burke. 60 out from goal. He'll quickly come in board where he'll find Terry Reeves. Reeves from 55. Sends it inside forward. 50. Freckleton goes back. Oh, why didn't... Well, I'm not sure why. He probably could have stretched out and marked that one, I reckon, Freckleton. I reckon it landed closer than he thought. And it spills to Chambers, who runs it through for a minor score. So they'll hand it over to Blanford to bring the ball back in a play. It's 78 playing. 57. He could, tried, he could have marked that if he stuck his arms out, I reckon. Oh, he should have, he should have gone full pelt at it. Blanford played on from fullback for Storm. Sends it swimming pool side. Well beyond 50. Big punch defensively. It'll suit Storm to go over the boundary line. In fact, it does. Yeah, Caleb Burns knew what he was up to then, up in that marking contest and just thumped the ball towards the boundary. I'm not sure the dogs can win it from here. They need to be super aggressive. They need to use this wind, which has died down considerably. Storm have been super in this final term. Will they get another chance, the dogs? Whistle on play. And it which should be 50 it, metres. Which way is it going to go? It's Golden Square's kick. It's going to the dogs. <laughs> Needs to be aggressive, Toma. He's a long way from home. Put it to the hot spot. He's got players to choose from. You go now long. It goes central corridor to nobody. Had a good Hallinan. game today, Helena. 35 from the goalie defence takes a mark. Unopposed in the end camp. He's had a good final series, has Mitch Helena. He'll clear out a defence for the storm. And the kick just skewed off the side of the boot a little bit. Toma. Gets it back for the Dogs. Quickly sends it back inside forward. 50 Helen and again sets himself. Couldn't take the mark this time. Hits the bottom of the pack. Will board up. 25 metres out directly in front of goal. But plenty of time left, you would imagine. Last quarter went for over 30. So there may be another five or six minutes left in this game still. 
Ernst goes into the ruck. He had the height over Rayner. He won it down. It's cleared out of there by Stevens, but it's going to be coming back for the dogs. It's in the hands of Holt. Inside forward 50, and a mark's taken directly in front of goal. And Rosengreen's a good set shot. And if he kicks this, they're still alive. If he misses, I doubt they are. It's the first time he's got separation from uh, Lockie Ratcliffe uh, today, and he made the most of his chance. 40 metres out directly in front. Rosengreen's going to waste no time coming in. He's got three this afternoon already. He starts it right, but it swings back. He's got four, and there's still a pulse in this game yet, John Hunter. It is well and truly game on at the QEO. The Golden Square Bulldogs get a big goal. 9 9 63, 15-point margin. The Storm, 10 18 78. Score sponsor. Parsons Towings, Castlemaine, local footy lives at Fresh Bendigo. Yes, it could still be five or six minutes left in this contest. This is a crucial centre bounce. Uh, square must get it away. Storm must smother it. Under three goals, 15 points. Dogs have got a sniff here. They need to win it out of the centre. Big punch from Rose and Green forward for the Dogs. Clossy did well, won it for the Storm. Up and under, kick to half forward. In attack, Gordon, juggling Mark. It is. It wasn't paid. Kick is smothered. Spills. One on one contest. Toma getting his hands dirty, but holds up the footy. And halfway between centre and half forward, Storm in attack will have a ball up. That we will. Must have had a few sets of hands on that one. It spills out to Murphy. Murphy sends it inside forward 50 for the Storm. Puts it out into space. Charles comes at it. They all overrun the footy. Knocked forward for the Storm by Gordon. Charles in there again. Good tackling pressure from the Dogs. We'll have another ball up, forward pocket, right hand forward pocket, but it's up the wrong end of the ground if you're a supporter of the team in the blue and the goal. Umpire Anderson throws the ball up in the air. Knocked down, Trolfer went through, couldn't take it, picked up Clossy. Clossy will go around the body, snaps across the face rather cleverly, it'll bounce out of bounds on the opposite side, forward 50. So the Storm will keep it in play. That's a better result than it going through from behind, I reckon, Norm Drinking. It is because Storm have now got a chance to uh, use this uh, contest to uh, have another shot at goal. It'll be at the teeth of goal. Ruck contest forms. Hurry kick out of the pack. It was OK by Rosengren, the Dogs. It goes 60 metres to the outer side to Monty. Monty will collect. Can he find space? Handballs. He's got support through Stewart. Stewart will win it. He'll, then he handles in front of him, Kevin Bartlett style, then taps it towards the boundary line. And you know who Kevin Bartlett is, uh, Cam? We didn't know who Phil Carmen was as the ball goes over the boundary line. 70 from goal. Kevin Bartlett played a few more games than Phil Carmen. He did. Dogs in attack, 70 from home. They trail. They need to kick three goals to win this cutthroat first semi. I would have called it Kevin Bartlett-esque as well. The way he handballed it out in front of himself. It's sent inside forward 50 for the Dogs. They need a mark. Rayner was down there, couldn't get it. Burke then tried to knock it to ground. Strosh is down there for the Dogs. Strosh handballs back to Stewart. Stewart couldn't quite take it. Still bobbling around inside forward 50. The Storm are content just to hold this around. They dive on top of it. The Golden Square supporters behind the goals getting a little bit restless because they can sense that this is almost it for them in 2024. Yes, the umpire in perfect position then, positioned on the boundary, watching in towards the centre. Of course, a lot of those people behind the goal are reserves players that didn't win today either. Monty handballs to Rayner. Rayner's kick was smothered. Colossi will dive on top of him and we'll have another ball up underneath the scoreboard. 63-78, 26 minutes, 35 seconds gone, final quarter. They need a goal and they need it quickly just to stay al alive. It's a messy bit of play. No clean possession. It spills beyond 50. Good, strong uh, tackling. They're all screaming for free kick and they won't get it. Umpire Johnny Norton will come in and ball up the footy. Tangled sea of bodies. Tired bodies here. It is, will be curtains for the loser. And it will probably be the dogs if it keeps like, going like this. Good, strong tackle on halt of the dogs who tried to make a path and couldn't. I'll have one more go at it, Cam. See if we can get us out of here. 70 from goal. It was Daniels. Tried to tap it here for the dogs. Hurried kick out of the pack. It goes forward to Strosh. Strosh arches his back. He'll go around the body. It won't be a goal. Into the goal square. They need to kill it, the Storm, and do for a minor score. So, Golden Square, 64. 
14 point margin, storm lead, almost 28 minutes gone, final term. Yeah, they might have done enough. I think even the square supporters behind the goal know it because they're not who harring as Jones comes in and kicks the ball out of defence. He'll clear it down the line. It'll come back inside though for the dogs. It spills to Rayner. Rayner handballs to Toma. This might make him excited. Toma snaps the goal. He's kicked it, but the siren sounds. Toma gave a big celebration and then he dropped because he was celebrating the goal, but it will not matter. The goal counts. And while we're robbed of a grandstand finish here at the QEO, eight points is the full-time margin. Jeez, it was an all-time celebration, and you could just tell in the celebration motion he dropped. Not sure what's going on behind the goals here, as the Storm win it by eight points. 10-18-78, Golden Square 10-10-70, and the Golden Square Bulldogs, their hopes of a premiership in 2024 now purely remain with their under-18s. While the seniors and the reserves bow out today to the Stratfield say Storm. So the Storm will roll on in 2024. They will have a cracking set of matches against Sandhurst next week in the reserves and uh, in the seniors in the reserves. They will be taking on Gisborne. Norm, I'm in a little bit of shock, actually. I was expecting that to go another two or three minutes. And when yeah, that's so on, I. I think everybody on the ground, including the players, you could tell it was a sense of disbelief actually that the siren went and surprisingly for uh, the storm they just hit the roof didn't they they did um but when you look at it there was only five goals scored in that last quarter uh, compared with uh, what we have nine go uh, no seven goals in the uh, third quarter so uh, a couple of less goals means a little bit less time lost on the, with time off and uh, yeah, to Strathstorm's credit, they bottled it up in that last quarter and they did enough after an excellent third quarter to keep to get the win. So we've got final scores in the A-grade netball as well. It is Kangaroo, Kangaroo Flat easily in the A-grade netball, 66. They have defeated Eagle Hawk, 33.